Hey. Hey. <laughs> What's up, y'all? I got my notebook. Yes, yes, yes. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready, honey. Y'all get in here. Let's review this show. Get in here, please. Pretty please with the cherry on top. Y'all get in here, please. Hit the like button. Put your like number in the chat. Let me hurry up and greet everybody because I got a lot to say. I got a lot to say. Oh, I wish I didn't have so much to say. Y'all, this entire season has been exhausting. This reunion has been double, triple exhausting. So let's get it done. The Haitian Empress. Hey, hi, lovely. Are you new? If so, please, anybody, if you're new here, make sure that you put FTL for first time live so that we can welcome you appropriately, okay? That's for everybody. How you doing, love? All right, Ms. Gardner is here, my good sis. She says she number 49. Boy, them likes been liking. I love it. Hey, Callie Dream, Edna Crowder is in the house, and Marie is here. All right. Our new sister says, an if anticlimactic was a reunion, I agree, girl. You will get no argument out of me, but there are some things we got to address because these help us try it tonight. Yes, they did. Hey, Tutu, for your info, thank you for being number 50. Yes, I'm glad it's over. This has been draining. Hey, Unique Mystery, how you doing? Kiana was the best part. Yeah, she's so adorable. I love Lil' K. She's so cute. Bianca Edwards, the beautiful, is in the chat. Our resident archangel. She keeps the chat safe. And I love it. I love it. Give me shelter is in the house. Hey, sis. Thank you for being number 53. Kiko is here. Hello, hello, hello. Y'all make sure y'all hit that like button, please. And thank you. Throw your like number in the chat. Stephanie Thomas is here. This is your first time. I need y'all to spam the chat and tell Stephanie, welcome. Welcome, Stephanie. I'm so glad you made it, girl. D. Saratinas is here. Queena, thank you for being here, sis. I love you. As you know, I ain't even got to tell you, but I will because I do. I love you. I do. That's my sis. Y'all just don't know. Okay. Hey, DV, thank you for being 54. I appreciate it. Y'all hit it. Y'all hit it. Y'all hit it. Okay. I love it. Listen, I can tell y'all got a lot to say in the chat. I'm ready. Sweet beloved, you number 54 too. I appreciate it. I'm so glad to see the sisters in here talking, baby, because we got a lot to say. And I am I promise y'all I will do my best to keep up with the comments. I, I work hard as hard as I can to keep, keep up with them. Sometimes they get away from me, but please don't think it's intentional, okay? Hey, Kimberly, happy Sunday. Vita Worship is here from Denver, and she's saying welcome to our ladies who are here for the first time. Hey, Nikita T, what's happening? What's going down? I see the welcomes in the chat. Kimberly, thank you for being number 61. All right, delicious. Hey, girl, thank you for being number 60. God's anointed daughter, my good sis is here. She's like number 110. Miriam St. Fleur is in the house. What's up, sis? Good to see you. Good to see you. Just observing is here. All right. Is this my Jenna? Yes, it is. That's my Jenna Harris. Hey, darling. Baby, baby, we saw the good doctor, honey. Oh, she wasn't playing with them hookers today. She wasn't. She wasn't playing. Hey, Jay Delaray, how you doing? Yolanda Franklin is in the house. Hey, sis, good to see you. Auntie Eva, we glad you made it. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for welcoming everybody. Jenna Harris, thank you for being number 66. Y'all get in here, get comfortable, hit the like button, run your numbers up. The engagement button on the bottom right-hand side, the circle with the emojis, make sure you hit it and send your bubbles up, okay? Jim Bunny is number 71. Hello, hello, cool gamer, always cool, always in the building. Thank you for being here. Hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much for being number 72. I appreciate you. Fresh strawberries in the house. Hey, now, hey, child, you know I'm going to tell you what happened. Is that my sweetie pie? Hey, Yusuf. Thank you for hitting the like button, baby. I appreciate you. And Janetta Porter is 73. SS, thank you for being 77. Dana Scott is in the doggone house. That's what I'm talking about. I love it. I love it. Veronica Hughley. Is this your first time? It's, a, it's her first. Y'all welcome Veronica in the chat. Welcome, Veronica. Hey, girl, welcome. Don't let this be your last time. We're so happy to have our sisters here. Morgan's Musings is in the house. Hey, sis, what's going down? Shaniqua Belton, thank you for being 82. I appreciate you. 
Nisi Rose, the, excuse me, because I mispronounced her name. Why did y'all not stop me? The beautiful and gorgeous Nisi Rose. Y'all know that's part of her name. If you don't know, let me tell you. Her name, you know, she's so, she's so gracious that she don't add that on here. But her full name is the beautiful and gorgeous Nisi Rose, the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian bombshell, all the way from classy Canada. Okay. Thank you for being like number 78. Okay. Unique mystery. This is your first time live. Y'all welcome. Unique mystery. Girl, you sure fit right in over here. I didn't even know you was new. Welcome, girl. Tammy Carter. Hey, sis. Girl, it's some BS. Thank you for being 73. I appreciate it. HB, you are welcome. Hi from DC. Is this your first time too? Because if so, we will welcome you too. If you are new, please make sure you put first time live or FTL so we can welcome you. Hey, DS, with your crazy self. Thank you for being 81. Deborah Best, thank you for being 78. Hey, Nona Perkins, peaceful. I like your name. Welcome. Thank you for being like number 71. I appreciate you so much. I do, I do. Yvette is here all the way from Birmingham, UK. Our good sis Angela Davis is in the house. Dana Brown up in here. Thank you for being 87. Vet, thank you for being 92. Just simply is in the house. Hey, all right, all right. Thank you for being here, Michael Morris. Hey there, what's happening, bro? I love it. Generous Soul is here. Hey now. HB, it is your first time live. Welcome to HB, everybody. Yes, I see all the welcomes in the chat. I love it. Is this my sister, Helene Easley? Girl, we ain't talked in so long. You better call me. You know, messed up your schedule, all that working and stuff. We ain't had a chance to gossip, talk, or nothing. Oh, man. You love my channel because I'm judicious. Thank you. I appreciate that. Y'all get in here. This is my sis. How have you been? Ori Naturals Healing. Girl, I miss you. We used to see you all the time. I guess your schedule changed too. We miss you. Hey, N Rose. Thank you for being 88. Mary Denise. Hi. How are you? Brian Patterson, my good brother, is in the chat. Thank you for being 96. You and DH. Thank you, Jay. Thank you for being 98. I appreciate y'all. Listen, get in here, get comfortable. I'm going to, like I said, I promise to do the best I can to keep up with the comments. Y'all know I don't like to miss anybody if I can, but your girl is human. I'm going to do my best. If I miss anyone that's new and y'all see FTL or first time live in the chat, you don't have to wait for me. Make sure we are welcoming people because that is important. Ooh, I had to get me a little napkin, y'all, because I'm having a hot flash. Mm -hmm, that happens to girls. Thank you for, for being like 100, Lisa. Essie Thompson, thank you for being 107. So if y'all see somebody new, please welcome them. Even if they're not new, if it's your first time noticing them here, make sure that you welcome them because no one should feel tolerated. Everyone should feel welcome. Hey, lovable Lisa, thank you for being 109. I appreciate it. My Trina Taylor is in the house. Hey, boo, happy Sunday. All right, all right. Born to be wild. Thank you so much for the super chat. My first supporter the whole day. Now, let me see what my sister said. She said, finally, this season is over. This RHOP franchise is problematic. Mm -hmm. If something is not done about the colorist and xenophobic issues, it will not survive. And she's right. Mm -hmm. She right. Thank you, sis. She ain't said nothing wrong. She is on point. Everything she said is right. They need to do something about it. Hey, too adorable. How are you? Leah is here. Hey, sissy. All right. So look, y'all get comfortable. The housekeeping like button, like number in the chat. Shanna, thank you for being 120. Thank you so much. All of our new sisters, new listeners, new family members, welcome to all of you. Um, we got a couple of little housekeeping things. Hey, Diva 2, thank you for being 119. What's up, BJ Dez? Glad you made it. Um, please always hit the like button. Keep up with your like number because you never know when I'm going to call for it, okay? Hey, Ray Ray all day. Hey, Tia Bala. Thank you for being 121. There's, there's my nephew, Ian. Thank you for being 122. I appreciate you, Callie. Thank you for being 127. Okay. On top of that, make sure we're welcoming people and being kind. Our conversation and our comments are for the people on the screen, not for each other. So even if you disagree, please agree to disagree respectfully and don't insult anybody. Okay. Okay. That's the first thing. Nextly, if you have a favorite, 
and you got a weak heart or any cardiac issues, this might not be the place for you because we don't spare anybody. When they right, we're with them. And when they wrong, we drag them, okay? And we try to do it responsibly. So please drag responsibly. But you know, sometimes dragging has to happen. The Haitian Empress says this is her first time live. Y'all, let's welcome our new sister. Hey, welcome, 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 and welcome again. Please don't let this be your last time because we are happy to have you here. Hey, Axe, how you doing? All right, delightful by design. You and slid up in here. I know that's right. Thank you for being 128. Tandra, for real, thank you for being 126. Just simply, um, Jenny Patterson. All right, thank you for being 141. So look, let's get into this thing, honey. Darlene Young says this is her first time live. Welcome, Darlene. We're glad to have you, sis. I'm trying to get everybody. Y'all know I hate to miss a soul. Hey, Anna, how you doing? Look, y'all, these people been playing with us all day. Hey, chubby girl cuteness. And there's my beautiful niece, Couture Bay. Hey, gorgeous. She's like number 137. Helene, thank you for the super chat. I love you too. Me and you are I love my Helene. I miss you, girl. Hey, little Mackie. Ciao. Baby, this is, uh, listen, season nine is a no for a lot of people. I understand. And Grace, thank you for being 134. All right. Well, we sure glad you're here, girl. We are surely glad to see you and been a long time. Cheryl, thank you for being 138. Larga Curves, thank you for being 140. I appreciate you. Shanna, thank you for being 139. So listen, y'all get in here, get comfortable. Um, make sure, tell me what you think about stuff. Anything you want to tell me, this ain't Sunday school. I don't mind if you cuss. The only thing I ask is that you misspell your curse words. I don't mind. Get creative as you like. Okay. Hey, Tamika Gabo. Girl, I saw the petition. Hey, he, he, L, E, L. Yes. So, you know, I want to hear what you got to think, what y'all got to say about things, what you think, please. And when the stream yard hits, please don't hesitate to hit it. It's for absolutely everybody. We want to know what you think. Hey, Keisha, thank you for being 145. We want to know what you think. And sometimes y'all help me think of stuff that I didn't think of. So I want to hear all that good stuff. I mean, let it rip. Let it rip. Okay. I can take it. Hey, Brandon Martin. Yes, Kiana is as cute as she can be. Thank you for being 145. I appreciate it. Yeah, she is adorable. She is an adorable little doll. Just as cute as she can be. Honey, she was wearing all that Chanel. I say, Lord, are we in the Chanel boutique or is this RHOP? Ray Ann 26, thank you for being 151. Is that my Jai Star? Hey, gorgeous. Michelle Bolden. Hi. Child, we're going to talk about it. Judy Aquaye is in the house. Hey, now. All right. So listen, Evelyn O'Shea is 139. I appreciate you. Yeah, we don't, listen, the notebook is here. The notebook is here. Y'all know how I am. When the notebook come out, baby, I got everybody, what you said, what you thought you said, what you did not say, all of those things. Evelyn O'Shea, thank you for being 139. Okay. Nashina, I hope I'm saying that right. Thank you for the super check. Nashina M., like number 143. Thank you, sis. And welcome, welcome, welcome. She says she just subscribed. I recently started watching your videos and I enjoy them. Gizzard has annoyed me more than usual. It's a no for season nine. Well, I understand. And Nashima, welcome. Y'all welcome, Nashima. Okay. Thank you so much for the support, sis. I appreciate it. There's a petition out um, to boycott the show or something like that. Jicky Jicky, what's what's up? None of these ladies gave us luxury, child. Kiana gave y'all Chanel down. I'm talking about from the earrings. She, I believe Kiana probably had Chanel toe rings on. She was Chanel down. It hit Twitter. You'll probably find it. I think someone posted the link or posted the um petition in one of my comments for a playback in the playback comments on one of my videos. But don't don't hold me to it. I can't swear to it, but I believe somebody did. I want to say I saw it. Okay, so y'all, you know, born to be wild. Thank you for being 162. So look, I got the notebook. The notebook is here and I can tell you what was said, what was not said and all that good stuff. We keep it straight as best as possible. Jen Johnson slid in at 161 and the divine Miss M says labor pains with gallstones were less painful than this RHOP season. How dreadful, girl. Now that's deep. 
gallstones and labor pains. Oh, girl. Mm. Mm. Tutu say it's multiple um, petitions, apparently. I don't know what to say, child. I don't know what to say, but listen. I know what these notes say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the notes had a lot to say. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Let me make sure I got my light right. Because the girls got to be able to read these notes so I can tell you what happened and what did not happen. Now, the first thing that did not happen was that they gave us this whole cliffhanger when it came to Uncle G, you know. And I told y'all, I, I had fear. I had a little bit of fear. And I feel like it was rightfully so because of the way they did it. They made it seem as though they were going to tell us that he was going to tell us something was really wrong with his health, honestly. So when they ended last week's installment of the reunion and Uncle G was like, some of y'all may have suspected and did not know. I thought the man was about to tell us that the cancer had came back. And I really felt bad, y'all. I did. On the inside. Because I really hate cancer. I hate cancer. Cancer has taken away some people that I love so dearly. Like, I thought that's what they were about to do, okay? The Haitian Empress says, did you peep that production did not include Ashley asking if the cameras were off? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That When they played the Audible, they cut that part out. They sure did. Girl, I caught it. I caught it. Yes, I did, sis. Yes, I did. They slammed me. So we're going to gonna deal with all of the manipulation that they tried this evening beginning with uncle g and his fake reveal because i honestly that's what i thought y'all i thought that man was about to tell us that the cancer came back and i felt so bad and i felt like that was extremely manipulative for them to kind of put that as some kind of cliffhanger and make us believe that when we came back for part three we were going to be hearing that something traumatic had happened to to the old man playing games playing games no auntie eva it was not cancer hey forever 21 thank you for being 166 it was not cancer it was not cancer at all this man came back to tell us that he had bipolar disorder why was that a cliffhanger why was that a cliffhanger and right, girl, he talking about some darn bi um, bipolar disorder one. I don't care if it was one, one and three quarters, nine and nine and three quarters, like on Harry Potter. It was um a hundred percent bull crap is what it was. First of all, sir, you are complicit with Mia telling these lies, promoting these stories to us. Oh, you know, I didn't know if the babies was was hers or inks or whatever. Then she go tell your girl necrosis the necromancer oh well you know i did iui to get jeremiah then turn around we don't know who jeremiah daddy is i told y'all then hey angie girl thank you for being 170. i told y'all then that i i did not want to believe but i was being forced to believe hey tracy lashley um i was being forced to believe that g was a part of the lies that mia's trifling tale was telling and I'm going to tell y'all something else that occurred to me. I promise it's got to do it tonight's show. I'm not going to bring you nothing that's not directly related to what, not even just tonight's show, but to this reunion period, right? Not only was G helping her lie. Hey, Anita, not only, not only was he helping her lie and come up with this storyline so she could stay on this show because she's giving him part of the money. Not only that. But when G sent the messages to Chris and Eddie only, that was a step, that was an attempt to set them up to see if they was gonna run with the story that he came and told them. Hey, Tara's opinion. Thank you for being one seventy six. That was a setup. Yes, girl. The fight in the kitchen was staged and rehearsed. That's why I was not moved with. Um, you won't fair go to a carnival. Carnivals and fairs are two different things. It was like okay, okay. A whole fat phase on lie. That was a setup. That was to say, that was hoping that Candace and Wendy would take the bait and come spray her with a bunch of stuff that they had cooked up while they was laying next to each other and she was changing his diaper. 
Now that's what that was. Hey, little girl, welcome. Say, oh girl, this scheme was bigger than anything Todd could have come up with. Hello, good night. This was a whole setup. This was a whole setup for them ladies to come with it, but it failed miserably and she had to bring it herself because both of those ladies had too much class than to go out in public and repeat anything that you said. And the fact that they said that what he said about her was heinous, horrible, and called her everything but a child of God, that was for them to come bring all that filth and just spew a bunch of filth and horror at this lady. That's what this was for. That, that was the whole purpose of what they did. Tanisha said, G on here playing with mental illness. Mm -hmm. He playing with it because he low-key got it. It just may not be what he said it is. Stephanie Thomas said G and Mia were working on that check for next season. That's exactly what they were doing. But look who, but look at whose expense they were willing to do it at. They tried to do it at the black women on the show's expense. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This was a stunt set up by G to come to us with the bull crap. Mia isn't smart enough and it landed flat. I'm sorry, but I personally believe it was Mia that sent the text messages. I don't believe G sent any text messages. I believe Mia did. I believe Mia sent those text messages specifically to Chris and to Eddie because she was trying to set up the only two um, black women on the show. That's just really what I believe. Because for this to be the cliffhanger from last week's episode, last week's installment of the reunion to this week's installment of the reunion, y'all are playing with us. And I don't have your time. I don't have your time. Okay. Kelly says, and wh why would Wendy check on Mia when Mia assaulted her? That's like being by coast or living only on the East Coast. Mia thinks the audience is as slow as she is. That's exactly what she thinks. Apparently, she thinks being dumb is normal. It's not. Haitian Empress says, and he forgets part of the lies locked in a room when okay, bipolarism makes me forget. Girl, if you leave Haitian Empress, I'm gonna follow you. I love her already. Girl, this might be your first time, but it sure don't feel like it. Okay. So that was the setup. And I'm gonna just go out the way and say this was the setup. They tried to set up Wendy and Candace, and it fell flat. Okay. So this is what all this old Negro had to say, okay? Hey, Queen of Hearts KS. She say, but they the only ones that have men. Nobody play with Ray. Child, they know to leave Uncle Ray alone. B, BJ did say the clip hang, the cliffhanger was not clipping. No, it wasn't, it wasn't clipping, baby. It, it did not clip. Hey, Star 3, then Mia gets praised for taking care of G, but she ain't pay his half of the... Swing low, sweet chariot. Okay. Just observe and say bipolar makes me child. Don't worry. I'm going to read y'all everything this man said. Larger curves say, um, I could totally see Mia texting like she's G. Men aren't texting each other. They family issues. No way in hell. No way in hell. It was definitely her. It was definitely her. It was her. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. So look, this is what all G said. He got bipolar one. He was diagnosed two and a half years ago. So let's let's take it one by one. Since since they want to lie and play with us, apparently they think being dumb is normal. Apparently they don't realize it's not. Um, right? Yes. Now, come on, tell that thing like it is. I love when my folks be on top of things. Wait, let me get this. Wait, 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 wait. Glitter girl. We ain't letting this comment go. They own shares of the company, but still broke. How now? How now? The company's not defunct. The company's not closed. You got shares. That means you get dividend checks. How in the world? How now? Delightful say it seems like the only storylines are to have gotcha moments for Candy and Candace and Wendy. It looks that way. The way you say. How many y'all watch Cinderella? Because you know that was in that, that was in that musical. Y'all forgive me, overlook me. Okay, I have moments. So he said he was diagnosed two and a half years ago, right? If he was diagnosed with that two and a half years ago, why would Mia get on the show and, and pretend like after everything happened happened with the with the company with his family 
that's when he all of a sudden became aggressive and whatever. He said he was diagnosed two and a half years ago. And according to him, he could see where he has had this problem since his 20s. Okay, sir. I guess. But that's what they claim. So I guess we got to go with what they claim. But that's what he claimed two and a half years ago. But she claimed that his aggression and him being combative and argumentative was a result of what went on with that company. That was the story that they went with initially. That was the initial story. I just want y'all to remember that. Okay. Miriam, you say you love Cinderella with Brandy. Yes, you remember that part? After she had snuck and went to the ball and she came back and her ugly stepsisters didn't know she had been there. And they said that to her because she was describing the ball because she had been there, but they didn't know it was her. Okay. Y'all remember. Okay. We're going to have to do movie night and then we might have to redo Cinderella since some of y'all don't remember what happened. But that was my that was my my musical. It really was. Yeah. Say two and a half years ago was their first season on the show. But she claimed he got aggressive when um he claimed she she claimed he got aggressive when everything happened with the company. Y'all heard it just like I heard it. Now, if it's a lie, she told it, but are we really surprised about a lie that Mia told? But let's keep going. He then said, Mia fake cried at this point. I didn't see one tear. The, bo the, the bottom part of her eye didn't even get moist or shiny or nothing, but she claimed she needed a napkin, okay? Then he thinks he had it when he was in his 20s. He could clearly see, um, you know, signs of it, and it got worse as he got more money and more power. What power? With your family? Okay. Um, He um says that Mia was not able to talk him down because Andy was like, well, can she see it coming and like tell you like, oh, it's happening. It's happening or whatever. And so he said Mia was not able to um talk him down at all. And so I was like, okay, he claims to have been um in a manic state when he texted Chris and Eddie. You wasn't in no manic state. So prostate cancer and not working, not the reason. Mm -mm, no, a broken jammy did not make him lose it. Um, it was just two and a half years ago, randomly. Jenna Harris say the beige tears have nothing, have nothing all reunion. I didn't see one fall because they, they didn't. They didn't. Uncle G eyes was wet back there a little bit. Logger Curry says she shouldn't be leaving with a huge settlement that includes mental health services for the de gassing from the extreme gaslight of the green eyed monsters. Girl, you so crazy. It's to say, if you go and watch me and her boyfriend, it's all a lot. It's a mess. Let me tell you something. I don't believe at this point, I don't even believe she really go with that man. I think that's somebody that stood in as a friend so she could do this for this show. I, I just don't believe nothing concerning Mia. The lies are just too much. HB says something about Gordon and Mia always seems staged and fake. Yes. Yes. From start to finish. The Divine Miss M say OG made Mia nervous when he got off script. There is a such thing as bipolar two and three. Okay. Michael Morris say, I look back on season six and this was never addressed at the time. Heck, I don't even think the camera crew caught him in a moment when his symptoms went through the roof. Right. But he was diagnosed two and a half years ago. I just want y'all to know that. I just want y'all to know that. Y'all see what our sister said? Mm -hmm. I just want y'all to know that. Okay. Um. Then... He denies locking her in a room because she said he locked her in the room because Andy asked her about locking her. And she was like, he's like, when I locked you in a room, he's like, I took your phone. Emma, thank you for being like number 200. He said, I took your phone. I remember locking you in a room. And that's when the story flipped. Once they realized that, oh, we telling two different stories. Then it was, oh, yeah. See, when I'm in one of those states, you know, bipolar make you lose your memory. I got some people I know that's got bipolar disorder. I don't remember hearing about you getting no am Negro because you got that bipolar because clearly this is m negro not to be confused with amnesia um yeah it make him forget y'all make him forget um and then he say mia has been good to him mia is great he went did the tearing up said that um she's been wonderful because she didn't leave because of this or that or she didn't want to be there she left because she couldn't take it anymore and I'm like, child, stop the bull, sir. Then, 
say that he checked himself in the hospital and Mia came to sit up there with him every day except for one and brought him some clothes and stuff to the hospital. Um, Mia talking about she gonna always take care of him. Of course, I'm sure you are. Let me find out this is a game y'all playing so that them people will give him back control of that company. G, can people, brother, sister, them, if y'all hear this or somebody share this video with y'all, don't fall for this bull. They only doing this so y'all will let him be back in charge as the CEO so he can lock y'all out. He ain't leaving that heifer. They still in this together. She don't go with that man. She don't go with that man. Okay? I'm just telling y'all, G, um, sister, brother, nephew, cousin, them, don't y'all believe this, okay? This is a lie. Um, G and Inc. are supposedly cordial. And he knows he, he's the one that pushed Mia away um, and claimed that he dropped the lawsuit against his family and everything. And he never lost the shares to his company, just the CEO um, position and the pay that comes with that. OK, yes, girl, so, so, selective Negro, selective M Negro is what he got. OK, yeah, she ain't no hero. This is lying hooker. And I'm really not surprised that she got a lying husband because people usually attract the same sort of person that they are. So it would make sense that she would have attracted somebody just like her. So moving on from that snooze fest, that the liar Palooza, then we get necrosis. Y'all call her Ineka. Um, Giselle calls her Nika. <laughs> Y'all be calling her neck bone and I call her everything other than that because she said... They're American. Let them pronounce it however. So since I am in America, in honor of all Americans, we're going to call her necktie, nantucket, nincompoop, necrosis, the necromancer, necrophilia, and necrotizing. But I will never address her by her name. Michael Morris says, I've always wondered this. What's the difference between bipolar 1 and Alzheimer's? Unless they're the same disease, but they sound similar. Asking as a non-medical person with not much knowledge. Well, bipolarism is... That is a disorder, whereas Alzheimer's is an actual disease process. That's, you know, start from there. But there's a lot of things that are extremely different. A lot of it, especially, you know, there's no dementia involved that I believe in bipolar one. So that was really pushing it for them to kind of just add that in there for flavor, I guess. OK, so when we get to Lord, y'all see. So is it neck bone tonight? OK, so y'all calling in neck, uh, neck bone tonight so in the neck bone portion of the show she brings up they the in the recap you know they always do the the montage the recap of everybody when it's a set a, a segment on that person so with hers they brought up you know ashley telling that lie on her saying that she said something she didn't say about the whole osu topic All right mood disorder bertha miller <laughs> all right jenna harris thank you so much for the super chat she says at well until put down the phone till she gets to her destination thanks for all you do bianca if you drive and put that phone down thank you jenna harris for snitching snitching is important if snitching saves a life, snitch, please. Jenna, thank you for snitching. That was that was helpful snitching. Bianca, if you're driving, put that phone down. Okay? Get back in the chat when you get where you're going. So look, they brought that up. We get more shrine talk in the recap. Baby talk, IUI, IVF. Don't nobody really care. Um, said that Candace gave her resources and information. Robert made faces. Um, a viewer asked a question about Karen mentioning that she was in North Potomac. I thought that was a fun little moment. Karen Huger was hilarious, y'all, and was like, I just felt like it was my responsibility to tell her she was in North Potomac. And I'm like, Karen, you was being petty, and it was funny, but you was being petty to, let, to make sure that girl knew she was in North Potomac. And Uncle Ray chimed in and was like, no, we're in Central Potomac. And they high-fived each other. To me, that gave me very much Nene and Greg Leaks, Okay old school RHOA Nene and Greg Leaks. It was real cute that they had a little team, little teamwork, okay? Now, um, then a viewer asked the question about her being from Wisconsin or asking about the story about Wisconsin, which I already told y'all on this channel. Y'all please hit the like button, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Um, 
Who's like number 365? Who's 365? Um, so back to it. I told y'all on this channel that this heifer was from Beloit, Wisconsin. Now, viewer call it as a viewer question. The viewer question came in, not a call, but the viewer question came in and asked about her time in Wisconsin. Now, she tried to address the subtle lie that she put out there because she really tried to create an entire persona about being L.A., L.A., L.A. Well, baby, that's not real. You went to L.A. from Wisconsin. You grew up in Wisconsin. And she tried to address it stylishly. She tried to, like, go past it real fast and zoom past it real quick. Oh, the accent is not Valley Girl. It's a Wisconsin accent. Girl, mm -mm. no, ma'am. You had all season is what you had. You had all season to tell the truth. And what you did was was tell a bunch of long neck greasy wig lies. You refused to tell the truth. I had to out you over here on this porch and tell these people you were from Beloit, Wisconsin. And you ain't never will make up your, your right complexion. I heard all about you, girl, from one of your classmates. So I was glad that she got outed at the reunion because it needed to happen. And um, the fact that when Andy was like close to Chicago and she said, yes, the, the, the test determines that that's a lie. Beloit is nowhere near Chicago. But, you know, lie on, lie on necrosis, lie on girl. So then Andy comes back with this um, shrine talk, and I know it's culturally sensitive, and I hate that we have to address it. Destiny, thank you for being like number 212. Um, I'm so, you know, I hate that we have to address it, and I just want to make it clear that production didn't know that this was going to be brought to the show. Girl, Andy, you a liar. Y'all knew what y'all were doing. Brina, welcome. Say this whole show is a fraud. When you're not a fraud, they give you hell. I.E. Katie, Monique, Candace, and Wendy. Hello. Say it again, Brina. Welcome, girl. Jenna say, I was like, oh, I'm in on the gossip. I was like, thanks, Auntie, for the tea. Girl, you know, you, you knew I, I was going to tell it. Yeah, two hours ain't close at all. That's like saying Ocala close to Temple when that ain't true. Hey, Linares. Yeah, Andy Lyon. Andy knew got darn well. Hey, Anil. Andy knew, Andy knew darn well that um production was absolutely in on it they absolutely were aware of what she was going to do and then we get more into why she's why she was so upset like we already knew okay yes she makes it terrible i agree michael morris thank you for being um 217 zelene yes necrosis the nincompoop mm-hmm Right. The basis of this season was about necrosis and Wendy. Of course, production knew they were in on it and they were OK with it. I think they were very, very happy um, to. To try to use this as a takedown to embarrass Dr. Wendy, I think that's exactly what the what the idea was for this idiot girl coming on this show with this mess. OK. Oh, Brandon Martin said, I should have counted the number of times Andy said production didn't know. Just lie. Just lie. Okay, it's not close because somebody has said it. So I went and looked at a map. Yes, I'm that petty. I looked at a map. Not close at all. Just just be lying. Kelly said, when the Croster said Wendy iced her out, she was mad Wendy didn't engage her. So SL for Nick Bone. No SL. Storyline. Ah. Boy, y'all be getting me with an abbreviation, don't you? Delightful says, Ashley is so ignorant, speaking on something she knew nothing about, wasn't even smart enough to research, just wanted to hate doc Dr. Osefo. Exactly. Just dumb, honey, dumb. So, old production didn't know, and, you know, um, basically, then he, he immediately shifted. Now, let's talk about this. He immediately shifted to... This is supposed to be neck bone segment. This is supposed to be necktie segment. If this was Nantucket segment, why are you still trying to make it about Wendy? The fact that this girl couldn't even have a segment at the reunion without y'all making it about Wendy is pathetic. It's pathetic. It's just as pathetic as that, as that microwave ponytail that she had in the back of her head. Pathetic. Well, they they initially wanted to bring her on through Dr. Wendy, but she didn't seem excited. Why must she seem excited? And, and it was the idea for him to 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 
to position that statement and for him to word it that way. She wasn't excited as though we mentioned this girl to Wendy and Wendy's demeanor was the issue. Did y'all catch that? Wendy, uh, Andy tried to make this girl segment an opportunity to make her a victim. This was an opportunity to make her a victim and he was going to take a swing at making Wendy a villain during this girl segment. She had all season and she couldn't flip the crowd against Wendy. She had all season and she wasn't able to make her witchcraft and xenophobia story stick. And okay? she had all season to make Wendy out a villain and her a victim. Now she's a fashion victim and that's true. But Wendy ain't picked out none of your outfits, nor your wig, or your foundation. Now, you a victim, but I don't know who you need to slap box, but it ain't Dr. Wendy. But he definitely tried it. Bring a yes, girl. Hit job. For sure, a hit job. Okay? She couldn't get it done. So, when, so Andy tried to take another swing at Dr. Wendy on the stage tonight. Still going to try to make it stick. Um, you didn't seem excited as though Wendy's demeanor was an issue. So when we mentioned her to you and you were upset, he was trying to tell the story that Wendy was upset. And Dr. Wendy, my hat's off to you, sis. My hat's off to you, sis. Nay. <laughs> Very proud of how she handled it. Because she was like, no, that wasn't the issue at all. And she recounted, recounted for everybody the conversation, which was, we have someone who knows you and they mentioned who it was. And she said, I don't know that person. Bianca says she had a light message and talking about the microwave ponytail. Yes. Yes. Now I don't know her. And she said, that's all I said was that I don't know her. So Andy still did not clean it up. Y'all Andy Cohen did not. The white powder ranger did not clean it up at all. He didn't go back and say, oh, my bad. I thought I heard that or nothing. Krista Jones, thank you for being 227. He stuck with it. He he just stuck with it. And Wendy cleaned it up. Like I simply said, I didn't know her. Like that was all. That's all that happened. Hey, forever grateful. Thank you for being 228. So at that point, Nick gets all upset. Oh, now she wants to neck twirl and stuff and wave her head around. And personally, I'm like, girl, I don't know how well that ponytail is secured to the top of your head. So this might not be the move, but whatever. What do I know? What do I know? So she decides to get all upset and, oh, I I, I met you at this and it was a, a VIP and there were only 12 people. Girl, she don't know you. That's all she said. And so Dr. Wendy was like, oh, are you angry? <laughs> After she said, because because when she said that, Dr. Wendy was like, but all I said was, I don't know you. I simply don't know you, darling. I don't know you. And so she's like, are you listening to listen? Are you listening just to talk? And that's when Dr. Wendy was like, well, are you upset? <laughs> are, you, are you angry? <laughs> ah! And so she was like, because you're really hostile. I haven't been hostile with you since you came out here. You know, since you brought this up, like, I haven't been hostile to you. Whatever do you mean? And she's like, you've been lying the whole day. About what? <laughs> Wendy says, I haven't lied at all. What are you talking about? And you ice me out. We're still trying to figure out the icing out of, of things. How, how can one person ice you out? Candace still spoke to you. Karen still spoke to you. Mia, everybody on Team Yellow spoke to you. You weren't iced out. The only thing that happened to you was that Dr. Wendy refused to give you a moment. She paid you dust. Dr. Wendy gave you the dusty mouth. And that's what you really mad about, necrosis, right? Kelly says production came to Wendy. Wendy wanted to bring Kiana on the show. Nobody wants neckbone. Why did production hire her? To, to take down Dr. Wendy, of course. You know that. That was the purpose of neckbone. She had one job and she just couldn't get it done. Yes, clutching my pearls. Are you upset? Yes. Are you angry? Uh, why? So Wendy obviously knows better than production. Bring neck, bring a necktie on was not a good idea. Right. They did not want Dr. Wendy to bring someone on that she actually knew. I think they intended to bring her on for her to attack Dr. Wendy. And it would have stuck better if she brought her on and pretended it was her friend. Hey, Kai, thank you for being 234. So I said, wow. 
what is really going on here? Niecy Rose, right, where was the ice? She don't know you, bro. <laughs> she don't know you. And that's just what it was. Jenna Harris says, and it was a flop. Yes, necrosis was a flop. So that's when she, you know, she gets all indignant and starts huffing. I'm not sure why she does that. It's a vein that pops out on the side of her neck and it's very unsightly. Someone should tell her. Oh, Merit to Medicine reached out to us first. And then Lebe said that she knew this, that, and the third girl. You mentioned about Merit to Medicine reaching out to your husband. First of all, darling, I don't even know if I believe that. I believe you might have reached out to them. And then Lebe told you about Wendy and you could get on through Wendy. Now, that's what I believe happened. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. And I think you were only interested in trying to get on Merit to Medicine or anywhere because that show that you were supposed to do with Carlos King that you shot the sizzle reel or pilot for with Carlos King for VH1 about first generation Africans in America, that show fell through. So you simply just wanted to be on television, did you, girl? That's all right. So she tells the Merit to Medicine story and then she ended up here and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So then Andy asked about the whole Osu question, like why they were dying to get that conversation on the television is so disgusting to me. But once again, our very own Dr. Wendy Amali Chamwa, I'm so proud of her because she shifted that whole thing. I mean, she slid to the left and said, um, Ashley, go ahead, Ashley. Tell us what Osu is. Tell us what Osu is. What does that mean? Necrosis tried to jump in and help her. There was no help for her. Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. What does it mean, Ashley? Ashley sat up there looking like she had a mouth full of that stuff she holds from Michael. Stupid, baby. Lips glued shut. All she could say was, I already said I didn't know and I didn't understand and this and that. Oh, no, baby. Oh, no. That's why you shouldn't have brought it on the show. The fact that you didn't know what it was. And I love that Wendy got her together and told her, girl, if you knew it was taboo, you knew you had no business bringing it to a screen. You had no business bringing it to a screen. And then you had Giselle. And did y'all notice her neck tonight? Why did it look like crepe paper? Giselle, do something about that. You pull that neck up one time before, pull it up again. This time use clothes, pins, and fishing line. I'm just saying. Tell me, what well, is it something bad? They just told you it's something that's not supposed to be even discussed. And um, I shout out to him and his Christmas clothes because he told her flat out it's taboo and we're not discussing it. And thank you very much. The idea that they tried as hard as they could to get a topic that's that culturally sensitive sensitive onto American television in front of an audience that is largely xenophobic to try to hash something like that out is disgusting. It is utterly disgusting. And um, I'm just, I'm just so proud of Dr. Wendy. She made me super proud. God bless her. That was, that was excellent. And shout out to Ike and his Christmas clothes for telling um leatherface that this topic is taboo and we don't talk about it thank you ike you and your christmas clothes god bless you okay so we got on past that foolishness i felt like at the windy check ashley for bringing that crap on the show in the first place that was that was what was up that was what was up um then andy tried it again andy tried it again they simply want to make they 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 have de they decided that they they made up in their minds that when it comes to necrosis she's not interesting she has no storyline so they're going to make dr wendy her storyline so he goes back to dr wendy and i'm sitting there like is this not necrosis is this not nakatata's storyline this is supposed to be her segment but all of the conversation is about dr wendy like oh my god this girl is pathetic Anna, thank you for the super chat. She said, yes, I love when Professor Wendy shut Nick up. Why are you trying to save Ashley? Yes, why? Why, darling? Why? For what? For what reason? The Divine Miss M say the plan was for, for Nick to define Osu. The doctor was like, ain't nobody talk, take, taking, um, talking to you. Yeah, that's exactly what she did. She shut it down.
down quick and it ain't gonna be no i don't even think um they expected nick to uh, nick expected to define it but i think what she meant to do was to jump in and try to save ashley by saying well this is just taboo let's just not talk about it or whatever like that and so quite personally i'm glad dr wendy did not allow her to save that girl dm um you can believe gordon but we don't i'm just tell you girl we don't believe gordon so anyway, Andy's right back to Dr. Wendy. What would you need to move forward? And I was, again, proud of w Wendy made me proud tonight. Sometimes she pissed me off, but she made me proud tonight because she made it clear, like, we can coexist. I don't need anything from her. Nothing. Be accountable. Move on. Like, that's it. Let's just coexist, child. Let's move on. And I feel like Dr. Wendy showed us this season that she can do just that. All season, it was literally necrosis neck bone necklace whatever y'all want to call her that kept making rude nasty comments and gestures to dr wendy all season she did it at karen's um party um with the female impersonators and doing the the thumbs down and got kicked off the stage she did it again in dominican republic when everybody when wendy's toasting and everybody's smiling and saying hey no drama great she's well none from you Wendy didn't give her any of that action. She gave she gave all that energy to Dr. Wendy. So Wendy has proven that she can coexist and move on. She don't care about you. She don't care about you at all. Moving right along. Um, of course, you know, she's like, oh, I've been attacked. I've been iced out. And mind you, I know we can look back at the entire season and I, I can't think of one time that Dr. Wendy attacked her. The one time she responded was calling you a crackhead. And I still feel as though Wendy shouldn't have apologized for that. If you call my mama a witch, I'm going to call you so much worse. So much worse. We're going to talk about everything. Everything. After you call somebody's mother a witch. So moving along from there, y'all, we get the Kiana segment. Um, Andy, you know, talks about her confessional outfit and how many comments she got. Hey, Crip, thank you for being like number 245 um, about all the comments she got uh, about people saying she had the best confessional outfit. And if I must say so, she did. She was as cute as a button. She came on the show cute as a button. Her confessional was cute as a button. She showed up tonight cute as a button. To me, Kiana is a 10 across the board, 10, 10, 10 across the board. OK, um, so he did mention that. Um, she says she had fun. He asked her if she had fun. She says she absolutely had fun. Um, says she met Wendy five years ago. So see, when it came to Kiana, Kiana was somebody Wendy actually knew for five years. And you wanted her to introduce somebody that she didn't know at all. I've just seen you in a room before. So that was very telling. Um, she actually showed love for everybody on the, on, on the cast by name, except for Ashley and Necrosis which was kind of funny. I caught that Kiana. I caught that key. K, whatever you want us to call you, girl. I caught that. That was a little slick. It was funny. Um, she was talked about being sick on the trip. Well, a viewer. Now let's talk about this too. Andy, and we're going to get into this later. So y'all put a pin in it. Andy was very careful with the viewer questions that he chose for the ladies on team yellow. But we're gonna, I want y'all to pay attention because we're going to talk about the viewer questions that he chose for the actual black women on this, on these couches at this reunion. Okay. Callie, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Delicia. Callie says, Candace should have taken Wendy's lead. Wendy didn't even pretend to cry or fake sympathy for the, for the GEB. She gave them the same energy she received. I agree. I completely agree. Y'all please hit the like button. Please put your like number in the chat. Okay. So. He was they he was super careful in the questions he chose for Team Yellow for the actual black women who are on this cast and were at this reunion. He, he was very pointed, and I feel like the questions that he chose from viewers for Wendy, Kiana, Candace, and um, I th I feel like they were premeditated. I feel like there was actually a plot. In the questions that he chose for them and I'll, I'll explain myself a little bit better later quiet storm thank you um for the comment and congratulations on your 32 month royal anniversary thank you for being like number 254. um so listen yes girl them gotcha questions oh yes 
I noticed, but there were no gotchas for Team Yellow. Hey, Mr. James, thank you for being like 242, okay? So listen, they asked about her being sick and, and about Dr. Wendy saying, I'm not sharing a room with Kiana. Still, these were questions that were pointed at Dr. Wendy. So like y'all pay attention to the type of questions that Andy chose because he was careful not to choose any of the questions that the majority of the viewers had concerning Giselle or Robert or Mia or Ashley. None of those questions were really asked, but he was like, and you had to look for these questions and it's a Kiana segment. And you're asking questions about Wendy. We're still looking for gotchas. Okay. So when they asked about the room thing, Wendy was like, well, everybody ended up with their own room. Nobody shared a room. Okay. And, um, of course, you got crosstalk from Team Yellow, like, but that came after. They didn't know that. That came after. You don't, we don't know when she said it. We just know when y'all played it, okay? You tried and failed. It was a flop. Um, Kiana was like, yes, yeah, she was bothered by them not checking on her, and she was shocked that Giselle checked on her, but she was grateful that, Gis that Giselle checked on her because she said that she was actually bothered by that, and she showed it during the season because she did say something about it. She brought it out during the season. She did not wait. Hey, Trinita Howard. All right. Thank you for being here your first time. Y'all welcome, Trinita Howard. Thank you for being like 262. Okay. Brina says, Kiana, Kiana's was whipping Deborah's blank for that to be her first physical altercation. That is not what she said, Brina. She said that that's the first time she was assaulted. She didn't say that was her first fight. She said that was her first time being assaulted. Now, we ain't going to say that was her first fight because we saw her. Hey, Monroe, what's happening, 352? So listen, and um, she said that they brought it out. She she checked them during the season. They apologized. They got past that. Um, Candace, y'all, Candace phoned in on this one. Candace jumped in and was like, child, that wasn't genuine. It was strategic. That was to try to make sure that she made me and Wendy look like bad friends. I believe that too. I believe that too. I do not believe for one minute that Giselle genuinely wanted to check on Kiana. I do not believe for one minute that Giselle actually cared about Kiana's welfare. I do believe it was strategic. And shout out to Candace for saying so. Giselle was over there making faces strategic get out of here get out yeah girl strategic people have peeped you people have clocked your teeth okay catch it okay catch it so i was glad that, that candace called that out giselle tried to defend her position but girl we see you you so nasty we see you so then we finally get to a wendy segment but if i'm being honest by this point it already felt like a wendy segment it felt like a Wendy segment when y'all were talking to Necrosis because Nekatata had no storyline. Her whole segment was about Dr. Wendy. We get to Kiana and y'all, Andy is strategically choosing questions from viewers directed at Dr. Wendy. And then we finally get to a, to a Dr. Wendy segment. And if I'm being real, we may as well have because y'all was already talking about Wendy, 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 Wendy. In the words of Nene Leakes, I guess I'm that girl. Wendy, you was that girl. Because it was all about you today. Jenna say, Wendy is the moment. Apparently. Apparently. Okay? The, the Divine Miss M say, I was here for Kay's backhanded acceptance of Ashley's, Ashley Lee's apology. Yes, and me too. Okay? Delightful by Design say, sure did. Everyone's storyline pivots to Dr. Wendy. All roads lead to Wendy. All roads lead to Wendy. Michael Morris said, I'm going to miss Candace and her folded napkin. They were both characters in this show, and they left their mark. Yes, they did, baby. Yes, they did. Tony Booth said, why was Mia in the first seat? It made no sense. It didn't. It didn't. Her ruining her home with her own cooch is not first seat material. It's not. So then we get to the Dr. Wendy segment, okay? They talk about her talk show and all her stuff, and we go over her being multi-hyphenate. Um, and they, you know, viewer comments about, oh, pick something that sticks and blah, blah, blah. So Wendy so so kindly, graciously lets them know that the Onye, Onye Home Essentials is still functioning. She's still selling her candles. Her orders go out every day. Um, she's still teaching, but she's planning to stop teaching. She's saying that the current um, 
semester would probably be her last because she's been missing too much time with her children. She's missed a lot of things. I can understand that. I thought that was real. And you know what? Those of you who watched, did y'all see how um they panned to Nakatata's face, Necrosis's face when she said she was missing time with her children? I felt like I saw some envy. I'm sorry. Girl, you want your you want children, don't you? Girl, if you waited too late to have your children, just say that and let that be your storyline. Because that would be that I'm I'm telling you, that would have been more interesting than you constantly trying to make fetch happen with Dr. Wendy, because it's not. Hey, gorgeous. Junie B says Mia was annoying me with all her side comments. That first chair went to her head. It sure did. It went to her head, but not her hairdresser, because that weed was tragic. You saw that jealousy, Nisi Rose. Y'all saw it. I said, ooh, what is going on here? Yes, Wendy checked them for coming for her businesses. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I wish Happy Eddie had not shared their sale revenue. Oh, I'm glad he shared the Haitian Empress. I am. They need to understand. Um, not being funny and, and not getting too deep into it. But um, hey, Tiny G. DWL? I don't know what they mean, but welcome, honey. Welcome, welcome. I will say this culturally and i'm glad they didn't mention it but i'm going to Igbo people start businesses where you find Igbo people you find businesses that's just what it is whether we're Igbo in america Igbo in nigeria Igbo people start businesses we make money we're industrious that is what happens learn it live it love it it ain't stopping it ain't stopping. So I'm real proud of Eddie and I'm proud of Wendy. Make that money, okay? Money is good. Money is good, okay? And apparently when it comes to the reefer, Eddie has had good market, okay? Very good market. Go, Eddie, go. And, and I love that he shared it because all those sour heifers on that stage were extremely sour to find out that our dear brother, Eddie, has made two million in sales, over two million in sales in less than six months. I want to see, I want to see how long it take Giselle and Ashley to sell caps and socks and a t-shirt to make two million. I want to know, has Robert sold two million in truck driver hats since she started? <laughs> That's what I want to know. What about that? Tell us about it later. I want to hear all about it. But yeah, so that was cute. Um, I was glad she got that straight. Um, had a viewer question about um, her calling Mia slow. Mia is slow. Mia is slow. And of course, Mia's like, oh, but buzzwords or whatever. I love that Dr. Wendy did not back down or bite it at all. Um, um, the fact that she was like, well, you know, this lady did say that being in North Carolina and Maryland made her by coastal. So I'm right there with her. Girl, you are slow. You are slow. OK. And so anyway, they brought up the crackhead thing. Another question about the slow calling and crackhead. So I'm like, stop right there. So, Andy, you mean to tell me that me dying with laughter, Tiny G? Oh, OK. Thank you. Listen, y'all be killing me with the um, abbreviations. I don't know what they mean, but thank you so much. Listen, I understand, boo. I do. But with these questions, so Andy, literally during the Dr. Wendy segment, after you made the last two segments from Nakatata and Kiana about Dr. Wendy, hey, Ali, then when you get to the Dr. Wendy segment, you pick two viewer questions that are almost identical to find a way to criticize this lady about her calling Mia slow. And then you went and grabbed another viewer question about Mia being slow and Nakatata being a crackhead. And I love that Wendy handled it. She was like, well, that was, in that was in response to my mother being continuously called a witch. But I apologize for calling you a crackhead. Whatever. And so move right on from there. And, and that's it. That's all. There was no gotcha moment. Andy wanted one. But you flopped, Powder Ranger. Go, go, Powder Ranger. So anyway, Mia brings up what well, you call me a, path a pathological liar. Wendy say, but Mia, you lie all the time. And so Andy brings up that Candace called her Mia be lying. And she said, well, yeah, because you do be lying. And so Mia retorts with, you know, Candace be crying. She said, I sure do, and pulled out her napkin. I say, handle it. Handle it. Mm-hmm. Child. 
Hold on, I'm trying to get a comment, honey. BH say once again, Wendy and Candace can't use loaded words, but Gizzard can use loaded words to attack Chris. I know that's right, BH. You better tell it. Awa says Andy can't help his bias. He identifies with the troglodytes. Well, you know, those is kin people, child. Mm -hmm. That's who he's some kin to. Yes, girl, the powder ranger. Yes, everybody said Mia was a liar. Hilarious. Mia need to stop lying. Like, what do you mean she called you a pathological liar? Baby, the Lord called you a pathological liar. Stop. Just stop all that lying. So I thought that was a cute one. You know, they ended it on the truth. They ended it on the doggone truth, baby. Then we get to this Ashley situation. Oh, my God. The mess of it all. So Ashley with this divorce stuff, uh, they played the audio of the attack. But as our new sister, Haitian Empress, pointed out, they surely made sure they cut out the part where Ashley said, are the cameras off? Are we wrapped? Are we done? Y'all remember that part? Do y'all remember that part? Please tell me y'all remember that part. When that helper said, are the cameras off? Are we wrapped? Are we done? Do y'all remember that? Because I do. When she made that statement and they played the audio, they played it right we all heard it i'm not crazy right our sister pointed it out earlier but i just want to point it out again but then when they played it tonight they cut that part off they cut it off and i'm trying to understand what you cut it off for why 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 would you cut it off what did you cut it off for hold on because i'm gonna get it because i want y'all to listen to it tonight Callie, thank you so much for the super chat. She said, Ashley's divorce is just as real as Kenya Moore's. I know that's right. Bootleg, fake. Hey, Kim Cat. Okay, y'all remember that? Miss Weedy Poo, she said she remember. You remember? Mm-hmm. Because we going to get to it. We going to get to it. Because personally, I'm, I'm just tired of the lying. I'm tired of the gaslighting. I'm tired of pretending like, you know, them, them pretending like black women are just not bright. And we simply do not know what we see with our own two eyes. We we just can't figure anything out without them, you know, telling us. And, and even when we see something, they're there to tell us that we did not see what we saw. We ain't see it. Mm -mm. Nope. Because that's, that's basically what they're doing. Now I don't want to play. Hold on. Because I sure wanted to play that audio again because I'm like, what's the problem? Hold on. Okay, that's what's going on. Because y'all know I'm about to play it. Y'all know I'm about to play this audio. I, you know I wouldn't be me if I didn't. Hold on. Hold on. hold on now let me ask y'all something was that on the very last one no that was it it was the it was the one called fashion showdown right that was the one right mm-hmm 
I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. And here we go. Okay, listen up. Very fast. Like, I just need to get through the day and get to my dad. Are the cameras down yet? We're wrapped. We're done. So, why we didn't hear that tonight? Why, why, how come we couldn't hear are the cameras down yet? Are we wrapped? Are we good? Why didn't we get that tonight? Because y'all heard that, right? Are the cameras down yet? Are we wrapped? Are we good? But somehow tonight, when they played the audio, we didn't get that tonight. I'm just saying, I'm not accusing nobody of nothing, but I am. Um, but we didn't get that tonight. We didn't get any of that tonight during her segment or whatever. So we get to hear about this divorce. They play the audio of the attack. They play Big Reese asking Candace about the champagne bottle because that's what they wanted to make the whole thing about was the champagne bottle. We get Ashley in a confession talking about that wasn't a good look picking up the bottle. Shut up. Everything bottle, bottle. The bottle was the least of your worries. Okay. Then we get um, her claiming she's dating, but he's just a friend because he don't want to get married and he don't want children, but she want to get married, blah, blah, blah. Andy asked her flat out, you know, use the viewer question, but just to ask, is it real or is it fake? I feel like by this time, Andy is figuring out that y'all probably got played and this ain't no divorce. Um, Robert, of all people, jumps in to ask, well, what's up with the divorce? What is it with her not answering no questions about her life, trying to pass it off as you don't care, but you got all these questions for everybody else. Kim Cat, thank you for the super chat. She said there's video footage that Ashley was standing there. Oh, yes, we saw it, girl. We played the fight video over here. I'm, I, I will play a fight video. I, I will. And the start and end of the fight. So Ashley lied again. She pretended like she wasn't there with Corey, the hairstylist. Yes, she lied. That's what she did. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the super chat, boo. You absolutely right. She did. So um, Robert asking, what's the hole up? Ashley claims that she was in a toxic cycle and they were in a toxic place while they was filming. And as soon as they finished filming, y'all was getting along real good. Of course, how convenient in the words of Wendy Osefo, how convenient because while y'all was filming, you had to claim he was toxic because the minute you that people tried to put the camera on the phone on FaceTime, he hung up on you. He don't want to be on that show. So of course you're going to claim it's a toxic cycle and y'all were toxic during filming. Junie B say, funny how they was questioning Candace on what she would have done, but not what actually happened. You better clock it because that show what happened, baby. Haitian princess say the bottle was never used, uh, was talked about more than the actual assault. Yes, because that's what they wanted to focus on was her and a hypothetical that never happened. Okay. Callie say, Deborah already knows the way to Sesame Street. Ashley is messy. She invited Elmo to Karen's e event last year for the same reason, to start mess. Sure was. Sure was. And Candace um, flipped her off and paid her dust last year, too. And this girl tried to get the fight. Tiger Eye Oracle, thank you for being 290. Okay. Jen Bunny said, nobody cares about Ashley and the Crypt Keeper. Nobody. That was news we did not need. Okay. So she told us about the toxic cycle. She claims she filed something to reinitiate the divorce. Like, girl, girl, reinitiate my foot. Then she claims that Michael took a trip on Valentine's Day. So she thinks he got a boo thing or whatever. Girl, that man just cheating in peace like he was doing before y'all got on this show. Okay. Then she claims that she put the boobs on the, on the American Express card. Of course she did because that's still your man. Okay. If he was not your man and you put some new titties on an American Express card, that man would have quickly revoked that card or been putting like a monthly stipend on a card for you. There's no way in hell. Thank you, baby. She lying. She lying. Okay. Now, see, <laughs> you rough in here. You rough in here. I love it. So, listen, she claims she put, she put the boobs on the Amex lying through her teeth. Then she claims she's seeking a sizable amount. And she thinking of her kids, girl. Bye. Southern Ivy, thank you for being 279. Okay, Brown Style say big back and her stiff bob asking about everybody else's husband but her own. Why wasn't everybody else dragging her? Hey, sis. Hey, everybody. Okay. That's what needs to happen. That's what needs to happen. 
So anyway, she claiming she's seeking a sizable um, settlement, blah, 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 thinking about her kids' future. Girl, I'm going to shut up. So anyway, she claimed that um, a viewer question asked the court, asked her, did she feel some type of way about Mia said she married for money and something and basically told her you're staying for money. Um, she claimed that she was working when she met him and showed a picture of her graduating from college, I guess, and said that she wanted to be a broadcaster. But basically, she quit everything she was doing because he said he wanted to travel the world. And she said, say, let's. OK, and then she put everything on him and blah, blah, blah. And she didn't further anything for herself. And we already know you didn't do nothing. Forehead, we know. Um, Baby, it was not you. We all know. And so then she claims that she still loves him. Now, this is the part we got to talk about, y'all. We got to get into this because Ashley definitely played with us. She played with us like we slow. She treated us like we were Mia. Okay, Lola Duncan. Now, girl, I believe it's your first time, but I swear, I swear you've been here your whole life. She said Ashley do TikTok videos to get boys for Michael. I'm through. I'm through. I'm through. I'm not. I'm not dealing with y'all today with this craziness. Okay, I agree though. <laughs> I totally agree. Let me just say that. But you crazy. So this is what we got to talk about because she claims. Listen now. She said, I still love him. I massage his feet every night. And so then after they questioned her about saying she massaged his feet every night, this lady then says, no, massage the past tense with a D, get the D. No, ma'am. You said, I still love him. I massage his feet every night. And then when they questioned her about it and she realized what she said, then it switched to massage the, but there was no duh. Thank you, he he L E L. I didn't hear no massage duh. There was no massage duh. Okay. Say so she definitely said rubs. There was no E D. There was no E D. There was no freaking E D. Okay. She said she still loved him. I massage his feet every night. That was not past tense. That would have been I was in love with my husband and I used to massage his feet every night. That was I still love him. Don't listen. I'm I'm trying to be nice today and not go back and grab audio for everything. But she said that Jenna Harris. Oh, girl, girl. Okay, you caught that? Yes. And they kept playing that line in the trailer because we heard what she said. But Andy is letting these people get away with lying because he's in league with them. He's their accomplice. Michelle Bolden said, "Yes, I remember. Wasn't that velvet rope to separate the cast members?" Ashley walked Deborah over to Candace. She did after she said it was the cameras down. And every night, we ain't stupid. That's what she said. Yes, Mr. James, she ain't slick. Loud and clear, right, gorgeous? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. So anyway, they played with us like we were dumb again. Um, She's like, the, the GNA thing, somebody asked, how is it going? She's like, it's great. They work great together. Um. And they asked them, you know, were, were the fashions really like Lululemon meet Savage Fenty? They said hell to the no. Karen said it was more like grocery store catch a man booty call. Okay. And Gis Giselle said she wasn't mad at that. You shouldn't be because I felt like that was a compliment after we really saw what we saw. And they said, was it kind of like she by Sheree? They said no. Okay. Then he asked um, Kiana. Or, or whatever about what happened and you know when that when that thing attacked them and she said now this was she's i got my notebook because i want to say it right this is what kiana said because this is the part that pissed me off so bad we had to do a whole, whole video about giselle blaming the only black women on cast okay kiana said this is about the fight incident so y'all listen up hit the like button thumbs up share the video Use your engagement button, send bubbles up. I don't care which ones you send, send them up, okay? Kiana said she was there basically trying to de-escalate the situation, okay? She said Wendy was trying to de-escalate it first, but Wendy was standing behind her, so she was actually closer to the girl. And so then she started to try to de-escalate the situation, okay? She then said... She then said that um, 
I don't know her. I never met her before. And we saw that Kiana wouldn't have known that girl. She wouldn't have a reason to know Deborah. She didn't know her at all. Um, she was like, basically, I, I don't know her. And so Andy mentioned about um, that we saw you fight. And she said, yes, after I, she said, I was hit in the face with a glass. She said, I was assaulted with the glass. And I think it was Candace that chimed in and said, and it bursted, it busted her head open. Yeah. You hit me in the head with a glass, baby. We going, we, we, I promise you, we're going down round and through there. It's not going to be a Sunday school class. I'm going to beat the living stew out of you. It, especially if you cut my face, that's a no go. That is a no go area. Okay. Um, Candace said it came, they asked Candace at this point, like, had it, um, Andy asked her, had this, had this, had y'all been talking about the girl all night making comments or did it just come from nowhere? Candace said it came from nowhere. It came from nowhere. And the name calling came after. So Mia said that she can believe that she said she could believe that because she said Deborah rolled up on her with the same type of energy. Like, oh, you call me a four. You call me a four. So basically, Deborah, Riff Raff, the Geico Caveman, George Foreman, David Allen Greer, any of the names you have called this creature, Sesame, Sesame Street, Grover, Cookie Monster, whoever, huh? She's been sitting back watching the show. She's a fan. She's a viewer. And then she wanted to get her get back because she realized she made a big joke out of herself. But instead of her being mad at Ashley, who first put her up to coming on this show to lie on people's husbands and pretend as though she thought she was desirable. No, she's angry with the people who helped the audience crack jokes on you. And then production played the clip of Mia Thornton saying, well, she's cute, but she's not cute and called her a four. I felt like Mia was, was incredibly generous to call her a four, even though we all know that Mia Thornton is also aesthetically challenged. Mia's about a four. Dee Bora's about a one, about a one and three quarters. Honestly, if we being real. Um, but she said that she ran up to her with that and she was like, oh, no, 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 girl, you a beautiful black woman. All us are tens. Girl, first of all, you ain't a beautiful black woman and neither she, neither one of y'all are black, but that's neither here nor there. And neither one of y'all are beautiful, but that's also neither here nor there. So she took that moment to say that if Candace had just like backed down and basically kissed her butt, then the girl wouldn't have attacked her. Nobody's doing that for you, um, Grover. Nobody's doing it. Um, so anyway, she's like, well, just don't entertain her. Just don't entertain her. So Andy asked Giselle. Now, why he asked Giselle? This is what pissed me off, but I want y'all to get something. Now, I know we did a live. Um couple days ago about this whole exchange with Giselle deciding to blame the only black women on cast when they had nothing to do with this wild animal coming in there to with the, with the intention to attack Candace Bassett. But he asked her, after seeing the footage, who did you think was responsible? No, number one, can we be honest here? Do y'all mind if we're honest for a minute? Can we be honest? Number one, why does it matter who she thinks was responsible? Is she God? Is she the boss? Is she an, is she an EP? Because she's none of those things. This is someone who has no storyline and couldn't even keep her first seat. She lost it to Mia and her wrecking ball cooch. So Andy felt like, okay, we're going to ask her who she thinks is responsible as though her thoughts on who's responsible is somehow relevant. But that's what he did. And he said, after seeing the footage. And so I didn't bring this up a couple of days ago because I really didn't even catch that part. When she said, well, after seeing the footage, I blame everybody and proceeded to name all of the black women on cast and the wild animal who attacked Kiana and hit her in the face with the glass. So I want to stop right there. So you mean to tell me after seeing the footage, after watching the altercation after her seeing, hey, Marty, 1003, right? Who cares what, she, what Glizzard says? Who cares about what the Glizzard says? The Glizzard said, after watching footage, seeing Dr. Wendy moving out of the way, after watching the footage and seeing the wild Muppet hit that young woman in the face with a glass, after watching the footage and seeing Candace with her back turned, shaking her tiny backside that all of these black women were responsible for a wild untamed gila monster 
for trying to attack her? How is she responsible for that? How would any of them be responsible for that? And she was going to continue to say that Dr. Wendy was responsible, even after Dr. Wendy said, hey, hey, misbehaving. Hey, Octavia B. How am I responsible? Here you go with these broad sweeping generalizations again. And um, well, that's how I feel. What do you mean feel? It took, if Mia hadn't said something and just said, Wendy had nothing to do with that. She was nowhere near it. She would have continued to tell that lie and hang it on. That's how I feel because she was able to get away with lying on Chris Bassett and, and, and put it on her feelings. So she was going to try to lie on Wendy and put that one on a feeling. If it weren't for the fact that people are saying, girl, you looked at footage. This girl was nowhere near it. She was backing away. She tried to deescalate and was backing away. And mind you, even before she saw the footage, the next day at the, the event for the move, for the magazine with those god awful pictures, she heard everyone say that they were deescalating. So how on earth would it have been Wendy's fault? And so then Candace points out, not only was it not Wendy's fault, but she's still trying to make it my fault. She's still trying to blame me. And so Candace then goes on to explain what was going on from her point of view. And um, we get K Karen jumping in to help them put this girl on trial. Now, while I like Karen and I enjoy the Grand Dame, girl, you so full of crap. Why would you be assisting them? This was, this was the, in my opinion, Karen's opportunity to call everybody into order. The issue is not about Candace's mouth. The issue is this young woman came here with the intent to do physical harm to a cast member. That is what the issue should have been. Karen absolutely dropped the ball. I like her, but absolutely no. That was not okay. So Candace explained that she said, get this vermin away from me. Mia jumps in to tell her, you can't say that. And I'm sorry, frankly speaking, I agree with Candace. This woman has been online lying on her husband, lying on her and making threats. So if someone is threatening me online, you making threats about what you're going to do to me, of course, I'm going to say, get the vermin away from me. Or at the very least, get this get this hellhound away from me, get this critter away from me. She, I feel like Candace did very well to only call her vermin and the help. I think that was very kind and gracious of her. She's a gracious little princess. Yes, she is, because I would have called that thing a whole lot worse. I'd have called the police on that thing is what I would have done. But anyway, but it was the fact that, and I, I want to point out something else too. When Giselle got clocked, for blaming Dr. Wendy when she had absolutely nothing to do with it, she immediately changed the subject. Did y'all notice that? Hey, E. Davis, did y'all notice that Giselle immediately changed the subject once she got clocked and she couldn't blame Dr. Wendy? As soon as Mia said Wendy had nothing to do with it, then she changed to, well, I mean, when you're launching a business, the last thing you don't want to, you don't want your business associated with a brawl. Girl, they asked you who you thought was to blame you blamed the only black women on cast and they had absolutely nothing to do with that wild idiot rampaging through the place like a tasmanian devil nothing at all and once you got clocked you didn't apologize you took it back and tried to hurriedly change the topic because nobody wasn't talking about how you felt about a brawl being associated with your brand honey and can we talk about the fact that why did you not mention ashley why was Ashley not to blame, to blame for bringing that animal in there? Why? Why? How come? I'm just asking. I ain't blaming nobody, but how come? So anyway, she changed the subject or whatever. So they played Ashley saying that, oh, sometimes Candace Mouse goes too far. And she basically doubled down on that. Um, neck bone tried to jump in. I don't know why. Girl, you are barely on that stage. Talking about what she just just, just saying it like what you said could have exacerbated her anger. Like, girl, go away. There's no such thing as exacerbating anger. If someone came with the intent to do bodily harm, that's exactly what they were going to do. And I was glad that Candace called it exactly what it was and said it didn't matter what I said to that girl. She came with that intention and she was going to do that, whether I called her vermin or whether I engaged in a fight with her or not. This, this, that's what she came to do. Um and I'm, I'm just glad. So then a question came basically saying, Ashley, did you invite um, Deborah 
to stir the pot. And um, Ashley claims that Deborah told her, now listen now, she said, Ashley, forehead, nine head, whatever you want to call them. She said, Deborah told her that she wanted to come there to clear the air with Candace. You knew that whore didn't want to come clear no air with Candace. You knew what had been going on online. You were fully aware that your facially challenged friend had been making threats of violence online. You were fully aware that your facially challenged friend had told lies on this woman's husband. I believe at your behest. I believe you asked her to do it. Mm -hmm. Just like you engaged in lying on her husband saying that he um, DM'd you when you knew he only responded to a story of yours. Yeah. So you claiming this girl asked you to bring her there to clear the air, baby, that's an admission of guilt in my opinion. So she, you didn't invite her because you wanted her to participate in your beautiful moment for your new business. You brought her there because she asked to be there. You invited her because she asked to be there. So that wasn't an invite, Ashley. See, when Ashley keeps talking, she tells on herself, you brought her there because she asked to be brought there because she wanted to confront Candace. There was no clear the air. She came to confront her. Okay. And then she showed up in a ponytail with clothes on like she, like she came to fight. You knew why she was there. Shanna, thank you for the super sticker. Andrew Matt got his crown back. I know that's right. Welcome back to the fam, Andrew. All right. Brina says, Keon, Karen is always playing it safe, looking like Madam the Puppet. Look it up. Girl, I don't have to look up Madam. I'm old enough. I remember Madam, girl. Kim Cat say, that's because Forehead, Glizzard, and Deborah set this whole thing up. But the reaction they got from us fans, us the fans backfired. Yes, it backfired because somebody sold their footage to TMZ. And we got to watch the entire fight. The Haitian Empress says, and she showed up in gym attire. Right. She showed up ready to fight. She came to fight that girl. And I believe Ashley knew everything about it. Barbara Parker said, you clear the air on your own time, not on my job. Right. But they were going to kill two birds with one stone. They meant for her to come there, attack Candace. The other friend was waiting there to help her jump Candace. And we saw it because she attacked Kiana from behind and pulled her hair and made her fall and threw herself down in the process. But that was supposed to happen and they were going to blame it on Candace's mouth and what she says online and what she said that night. And then they were going to lie and say that she picked up a bottle to hit her. Candace was supposed to be the villain, but somebody sold the fight video to TMZ and they were foiled again. Okay. In the words of every villain on Scooby-Doo, and it would have worked too if it wasn't for those pesky kids. Would have got away with it. Junie B say, regardless if she didn't know it was going to turn into a brawl, she knew Sesame Street wanted to confront Candace. Yes, she did, baby. Yes, she did. Okay, Linda B say, it's only four items on the website. Yes, girl, that's all they got on the G, N, A. That's all they got on the G, the N, and the A, honey. Now, Helene easily say, Ashley already plotted that out with the, with the she-devil. Yes, she did, Helene. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Confessions of a reality queen said, if it wasn't for the footage, who knows how all this would have went down. They was going to lie on that girl. They was going to lie on Candace. Nashima, thank you for the super chat. You said facially challenged. You got me giggling. I'm trying to be nice about it now. I'm trying to be nice, Nashima. Thank you for, for the super chat. Hey, Paige. Yes, Scooby-Doo. Yes, Ruby, Ruby, Roo. She kind of look like him, too. Octavia say, if it was no footage, they really would have spun it. It's scary and it's sad. Girl, if it was not, if it was not for the footage, they were going to lie and say Wendy jumped in it. They was going to say that they both jumped that girl and the girl beat up everybody and Candace mouth started it and Candace called her 5th level names. They was going to do all of that because they tried to lie even after the fight video came out. I want y'all to let that sink in. These are people that are so heinous that even when they know there is proof of the lie, they will continue to tell it. I just want y'all to let that sink in. Between Glizzard, Robert, Big Mia, Ashy Forehead, and Deborah, this was a plan. They all knew what was going to go down, and they probably told Deborah, don't sweat it. We're going to blame it all on Candace. Okay? Yes. And June is saying the sad part is production would have helped them spin it. Yes, production tried to help them. They tried to help them. The very next episode, the whole conversation was about Candace and the bottle because by the time they shot that next episode, they did not know 
that someone had that fight video and had sold it to TMZ on the timeline that had not happened yet. And that's what they were counting on. And it all blew up in their faces. All of it blew up in their faces. Okay. So, of course, she said that she wanted to clear the air, blah, blah, blah. And then Ashley apologized to Kiana. Okay. Confessions of a reality queen. It's your first time. Welcome, y'all. Y'all know the rules. I want y'all to spam the chat and welcome confessions of a reality queen. Welcome, honey. Please come again. Don't let this be your last time. Okay. Misbehaving says, folks need to acquire emotional intelligence. My reckless mouth doesn't give you liberty to physically assault me. It sure does not. Because just like you got a mouth, they got a mouth. If they don't like something you say, then they need to say something back, but keep their paws to themselves. Okay, Leah got her crown back. That's what's up. Um, Haitian Empress says, I personally deleted it from my DVR, but I believe a sustained boycott is in order. I believe, I believe so too. I believe so too. Okay. She says she's here to stay. I know that's right, sis. Well, we sure want you here. You are welcome. So listen. After that happened, she apologized to Kiana. And Kiana was like, child, Ashley is the queen of the aftermath apologists. I say not the aftermath of Kiana. Baby, Kiana tickled me tonight with her little cute self. She says she the queen of the aftermath apologists, okay? And basically, it's like, girl, you know, you do good at apologizing after the fact, but you don't do so good and making better decisions not to create mess. You create mess and then apologize after. And she ain't wrong. Hey, Mo Thomas, say Bravo don't want Candace to sue them for workplace for two workplace assaults. Well, I sure hope she do. I sure hope she do. Because this is definitely a lawsuit. They better hope Kiana don't sue them. Okay? But yeah, she was she basically, you know, she told her what it was. She kind of accepted her apology. Or whatever she was like, you're not so good at being proactive. You basically you make bad decisions and do bad things and apologize later. That's who you are. And then she thanked Karen. She says she felt um alone, afraid, embarrassed in that moment. She says she has never been assaulted before. And I believe because she clicked. Soon as that helper hit her in the in the in the head with that with that with that glass, it was like somebody hit her own switch and little mama got the scrapping. Okay. And um said that Karen stayed there with her, rode with her in the ambulance, and she was right there with her. And I was glad that she thanked Karen. And and I'm glad that Karen did what was that for her. But, you know, she shouldn't have had to be because that child shouldn't have never been attacked on that show. That should have never, ever happened. There's no excuse for that type of thing happening ever to these ladies. They are at work. You're at work. Nobody should be hitting you in the head with no glasses. Okay. Lola said, Nitra, remember boycotting Bravo for Nini? I know you from back then. Girl, and you know me from way back. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Confessions of a reality queen says, Ashley Bella responded. She knew better. Kay had every right to say all she said. Sure did. Sure did. Mm-hmm. So look. Then um, in the little wrap-up. Now, this is where Andy, to me, really pissed me off. Again, he pissed me off this whole reunion, but he really pissed me off again on this one, y'all. Hey, Miss Dogan, to you, yeah, girl. Thank you for being like number 335. Hey, Wani, so they made me mad this season. Didn't watch, just listen to you talk about them bros, girl, because they something else. Yes, yeah, Sharon, it, it was planned from start to finish, sis. It was, it was. So listen, so he gonna say, you know, he wanted to wrap up, right? And so he's like, well... Um, some of y'all ain't no resolutions. And are there anybody that want to step up and apologize or own anything? We've already done that. I felt like I felt like he was putting bait out there for the black ladies to come and beg apologies from Team Yellow. Like Candace already apologized for stuff she ain't had no business apologizing for. Wendy apologized for calling a tramp that called her mama a witch, a crackhead. I feel like there's no more apologies for these black women to give to you or Team Yellow absolutely not okay and so everybody got quiet so ashley was like what about hugs and it was still quiet you could hear rat piss on cotton and i was amused i was amused and so then he starts calling people by name well you know candace and robert and of course robert is like well there's no animosity ain't no hatred or whatever and candace was like yep basically the same 
um no animosity no hatred and um i'm basically numb to it she said the friendship is over i put myself out there so if anything happened the ball will be in her court i say well all right girl all right now and so of course robert over there basically like basically trying to say she leaving the door open but i feel like you're talking about you know this type of friendship it's not just gonna heal on its own blah 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 you heard what candace said the ball is in your court that girl ain't finna be running behind you begging you kissing your wide flat behind it is not happening Shug. Mm -mm, the ball is in your court my thing is why would you talk about oh it ain't just it, it ain't gonna just heal by itself almost like you thought this was gonna be an ongoing thing y'all something tells me robert didn't expect candace to eventually get to the point of saying well if the friendship is over it's over i'm numb i'm numb to it and, and bye she didn't expect that and shout out to candace for keeping it g um at least on that one then and it was like well wendy and necrosis well you know basically this just not happening and so um Nick still trying to give speeches and stuff. Wendy looked completely uninterested and was like, "Look, I already said we can co we can coexist, and I still stick with what with with what have I done to you?" And of course, we got silence because Necrosis can't say nothing that Wendy did to her. Wendy ain't did a goddamn thing to her. Okay, thank you, Brina. And that was the end of that. Okay, he tried it; it ain't working. And so then we get to Andy bringing up Candy and Giselle, Candace and Giselle. And basically, like, oh, y'all need Jesus. Candace say, I got him right here in my heart. She got she got the Lord. G Giselle things eh, can't claim that, but you know, that ain't it. And so she was like, Look, that's basically said this heifer is a narcissist. Um, and acknowledges that Karen is the fence and that she is in Potomac. And he even acknowledged that necrosis in, is in North Potomac on a strip of land, because that's what Candace said on watch what happened. Not Candace, that's what um Karen said. On watch what happens live and it was so funny and of course necrosis is over there like no we're in we're in um we're in potomac proper no you're in north potomac on a strip of land that's what the hell you are okay now listen the stream yard is in the chat and i want y'all to give it to me don't kill me but give it to me i want to know exactly what y'all think okay then he um then he brings out pies for everybody and they crown him the duke of potomac corn 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 and more corn now if i got to be honest i'm closing the notebook but i'm gonna tell y'all what i think now if i got to be honest this reunion was a waste of my time they could have done this in extended like hour and a half version we did not need three units of this we did not need three parts of this reunion at all not in the least and i mean not in the least okay also i feel like this entire reunion we watched production and andy attempt to make the lies that team yellow told all season especially after that fight it was his job to try to make them stick um i think that watching his choice and viewer questions as it pertained to dr wendy and candace as opposed to the members of team yellow um it was a very clear line of demarcation there was so many viewers so many people on twitter who were in his mentions in the thread on Twitter, giving him questions, questions that all of us would have wanted asked to Giselle, to Robert, to Mia, to Ashley, and none of those questions were really asked. But then when it came to Dr. Wendy, we watched this man ask two almost identical questions. He kept trying to get a gotcha. Um, they were all in on it. They flopped, they failed, but it doesn't mean we didn't see it. And I think we all got our intelligence insulted. And I think a lot of women, a lot of black women watching this show were triggered and rightfully so. OK, so overall, I give the entire reunion like a, a five and a half out of ten. Go ahead, Kai. Tell me what you think, child. Well, good evening, everyone. I hope everyone had a beautiful Sunday. For one. OK, um, for me, I don't know. What would I rate this? The reunion overall? I'll, I'll give it compared to the season. I would probably give it a six. But part three was very lackluster for it to be the part three, you know? Like it felt like the part two that usually usually like part two is the lull. This one felt like I don't know. It just didn't. And I don't know if it's because like a lot of things just weren't really, you know, packaged up. You know, with a good finale or anything like that. It just felt weird. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's let's start in the beginning. Mia and Gordon need to get out of my face. I always was skeptical about. I wasn't skeptical about 
his family, you know, getting together and getting a, a family business together, I was also always skeptical about the way Gordon and Mia showed up on the show. And the idea that now we want to pop up, which I am a very much a proponent of mental health, of taking care of it, of everyone should have access to it and all this kind of stuff. But you know how wild it is for this man to be like, I got diagnosed two and a half years ago. This is her third season. I mean, and someone said this in the chat. There is a bipolar disorder too. There is a three. Like, so I'm like, for you to have this for two years, and him trying to like, oh, well, my memory goes. And I'm just like, what? It just felt so odd. And it felt like a way to save Mia from looking like a gold digger, if that makes sense. You know, yeah. Mia's not leaving me because I ran out of money. Mia's not leaving me because maybe my family cut me off because I was on this show pretending like Mia was running the family business. Because uh, <laughs> like, let's talk about it, please. Mia's not leaving me for all those reasons. Mia's leaving me because my mental health has gotten out of control. Even though we came on this the show, Two and a half years later, I'm diagnosed to the point where I had, a, obviously something bad happened. He had an episode where he had to be diagnosed and we got none of that. And then we go through the whole season of her talking about wanting to get divorced, talking about divorce for the last year and a half. And we had no discussion about, you know, you know, actually G was diagnosed a couple, a year or so ago, you know, d- depending on how this was filmed. And really, I just can't handle it. I thought I could, but I can't. And I still love him. I just can't be in this. We need to find it. Like, none of that was actually explained during the season. So to come to the reunion and essentially it felt like G was backing up the reason why. Please don't look at my wife like a, like a gold digging hoe. No, that's not it. I had mental health issues. And it just felt like another way to like, secure her another spot because not everyone's clapping up me that's so wonderful of you that's so brave of you and da da da, da. i'm just like right that's what a decent person would do it was super fake the haitian empress sis this is your first time coming to hang with us and yes. you've been killing me in the chat i i, I got to hear it give it to me i see her around mm-hmm. i know how she did it see you Kai, as well i know we've been on similar chats and i must say um i have not watched um, the Real Housewives of Potomac for a long time. I mo- I decided to watch it last year when um, there was a lot of discussion around colorism issue, things of that nature. I didn't think that I would have the patience for it. And this season was extremely grueling, very, very hard. But at the same time, I was aware of some of the narrative that I've been pushed through. So first, mm-hmm. when it comes to Mia, this is bona fide fabrication there is this is this woman when she opens her mouth get ready for fabrication for a story for something one minute they are sex sex quasi sex addicts that cannot keep their hands off of each other then they are in a trouble with Jacqueline but every time they're having a conversation, G cannot keep the story together and forget exactly what they have agreed upon for suddenly to come to a reunion. And in a fit of anger, you just reveal that your husband is actually impotent. But Mm -hmm. you were bragging during the whole season that he couldn't get enough of you and your friend, Jacqueline. This year you come and you're a stripper heiress I mean, you, you've had a life of luxury, but living in quasi foster care for all your life. But mm-hmm. suddenly you're an heiress. Suddenly you're an heiress. And girl, don't forget, don't forget she was getting um, big money to put her big old feet in me and chest. Oh, okay. Well, that part, you see, these are the parts I'm not necessarily privy to because I, I haven't watched enough, but enough to discern that this woman is always creating a narrative to stay on this show. The same way when they were talking about their chiropractic, their chiropractic office, which is a franchise and trying to speak of it as if they were the creator of this organization, that is not the case. So it's always something that is fabricated. But the, t- the point that Kai made a little bit earlier is the, this new narrative that they want to present as that she's a dedicated wife. No matter like, yes, yeah, she was cheating on me. There, we may be questioning the paternity of our child, which is ex- absolutely crass, you know, to, yeah. to, to bring that out. But 
just to make sure that we draw a narrative that see, still makes her sympathetic to the viewers. Let's say that I have a bipolar disorder, that she's going to care for, for me as if he's disabled, but that's not the case. Although she's carrying on with another man, but she's still a dedicated wife. It's, it's absurdity. It's it is. in people's face. And when it comes to Giselle, I really simply have no words when it comes to this woman and the way she behaves. And the fact that there are still people that are not disgusted by her abhorrent behavior. This mm -hmm. is like the lowest form of humankind that we see when we see this woman in action. People keep saying that she's a great mother, but we must wonder of what values she's actually instilling in her daughters by displaying consistently this type of vile behavior. Her daughter right. seems very well behave and I know that children have a mind on their own but at the same time be subjected to this kind of my line behavior oh I'm sorry I know Bianca is there so I really want to make sure that I make room for everybody but oh uh, girl we're gonna we're gonna let you talk again I'm just trying yeah, to get everybody girl. in but I'm coming <laughs> back to you so just put a pin in it you ain't going nowhere hold on Bianca Thank what you. you got for these people Everybody is a line sack of ish, okay? I can't stand not none of them. All of them getting on my nerves right now at this moment. Hello, everybody in chat. Y'all hit that like button. But I can't stand none of them, sis. Everybody a lie. Giselle get on my nerves so bad. And I see why people, listen, the fact that she brought Wendy into the situation where Wendy didn't have anything to do with it. And the fact that it took for Mia crater face to take Lying her Mia. after she assaulted Wendy to give up. That's a problem for me. All y'all mm -hmm. need to go. I can't take mm -hmm. it no more. I'm so glad this was the last episode. I don't know how I'm feeling about next season. Because first of all, Candace was already not my cup of tea in the first place. And the fact that I'm sitting up here taking uh, taking up for uh, Candace, that's the problem for me. Because I already didn't like her, but right is right and wrong is wrong. So this you message right? these people are doing, I, 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 I can't take it. I can't deal with it. I'm so glad this is the last episode. And I'm gonna What's your opinion, so Bianca? Uh, I need your opinion. What's your opinion on necrosis getting all hot and bothered and excited because Wendy simply said, I don't know you? Who? We don't know her like Wendy don't. Who? <laughs> now she from Whoville. <laughs> now she said the little who? Who? She is irrelevant. I cannot stand her. Her voice already irritates the absolute wish out of me. I cannot stand how she talk. I can't stand how she look. I can't stand a lockbox. I can't stand the hair. I can't uh, stand the sink that's not in the kitchen. I can't. <laughs> I can't. These people been getting on my nerves all season. I've been waiting on this one. I've been waiting on this last episode so I can let it have. I can't deal with Nick not in on. Nope. You can't take none of them, huh? Listen, nope. you don't even understand. I'm trying to put on my... I'm putting on my pearls so I can clutch them. Hold on. No. But <laughs> what else can't you say? They are very hard to stomach. Very, very hard to, to stomach. Yeah. And Nika came with her whole narrative trying to portray herself in a certain way. And nothing landed. Absolutely nothing landed. At the all. thing is that, I don't know if you know this, even... Tonight, she came to confront Wendy. Well, tonight, you know, when the, the, the reunion was filmed. Yeah, right. but at the, mm -hmm. yeah, but she couldn't hold a candle to, to Wendy. Okay. She couldn't. She Wendy exactly. stayed calm and cool and still exactly. ate her look. Exactly. Ate her alive. Completely. Completely. And what she did, because I'm part of a different community and we all are, uh, all so our your sisters are in here. It's some zones yes. in the house. You're in here. Okay. And I'm very Just happy. So you know. Yes, Haitian represent. But we we all have a lot of stigma in our respective communities. And to do what she has done is actually the worst of the worst. I it can is. take 
the nonsense from the green eye bandit, you know, this, you know, even though it's vile and bottom of the barrel, but what she did is actually far more trifling as they see in those streets. It's um, because it, 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 it brings about, it introduces your culture in such a negative light. Mm -hmm. And in turn, you turn around at the reunion, you sit down, and I said, I was so happy to be with a Nigerian and a, f a fellow Igbo sister. If you were, you would have never brought up those kind of things. These are things that we never discuss in society. And it's not because they are to be exactly. hidden, it's because most people do not understand. And we are dealing and they will with... Use it. They will use it to they make will use it against you and your community slurs. as a whole. Right. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. And xenophobia, we, we are in a country where the lack of education and the lack of knowledge of other culture is so low. You know, it's so, comment dire, pardon, it's more, uh, it's so heightened, the fact that people do not know other culture and to be introduced to something like that, that is so nefarious, mm -mm. She's a no for me. That's a very I ugly thing to do. And I agree. That would be the same. And shout out to all the beautiful Haitian ladies up in here. They, they've they been showing love the whole time. You've been talking to adorable. Um, who else? Junie B. All these girls. They they showing you all kind of love in the chat, girl. You are not alone. Okay. Thank and you. you're right. Mm -hmm. That type of thing is so dangerous because there are so many ignorant people. And when you're dealing with a situation like... America, where you had, they say it's a melting pot. It ain't no melting pot because don't nobody melt together. It's a stew. Everything remains separate, but it's just in the same pot. So you got a lot of ignorance. You have a lot of people that look for an excuse to say something ignorant about another group of people. Anybody who's different is, is a possible target for some ignorance. That Correct. would be like, you know, if they have a Haitian housewife and then they bring in another Haitian housewife and then now, now they want to make the religion of voodoo a topic just hey, so somebody can say something ignorant or that would be like me being on a show with mostly west african people and because i'm one of the ones born here in the u.s i'm gonna come in there with a bunch of gold chains on and a gold grill trying to sell people powder so they can say oh the american the akata so it's like you don't feed into situations that's going to feed the ignorance in the room Correct. and that's and legit what that thing came there to do and it was so disgusting I said from I'm with you, girl. I said from the beginning, the fact that she did that, unforgivable. It was unforgivable. irredeemable, irredeemable for irredeemable. me because especially in the social climate in America, with the immigration discussion, where people are trying to vilify, you know, already black people for any reason, but immigrants for any reason, any reason. to bring about that narrative, absolutely no, absolutely to me. It was disgusting. But can I say one other thing about that? It bothered me. Mm -hmm. Being one of the children is kind of caught in the middle, right? Yes. I felt like, and I, I have felt this way from the time Wendy came on the show. I was glad when she cleaned up her behavior because when she first came in, I made no secret. I was not a fan, okay? Mm -hmm. But my hope has always been, because I do have a very Pan-African attitude about all of my people. I don't care if you're from the continent or the diaspora. Mm -hmm. I was welcoming and looking forward to the idea that we could bridge a gap because that's what we need. Like we are different branches on the same tree. So I saw it as an opportunity. And I feel like when we have people like Nakatata, good old necktie, neck bone, whatever you want to call this, this creature that does things like this, like you set us back, like all the efforts that have been made so that we can find commonality and find sisterhood amongst ourselves as black women, whether we're from, whether you're from the West Indies, whether you were raised in the US, the UK, whether you were raised in France, whether you were raised in one of the many countries on the continent to find that commonality because we have so much in common. And of course there's cultural and traditional things and ethnic things that are different foods and different accents or different languages are different. But at our core, we are black women. We have so much more in common than we have different. And when you have somebody that comes in to play up on, on things that can be used as xenophobic arguments and stereotypical insults, you're really pushing that divide back there. You taking us all the way back to the 60s and 70s 
when clear people controlled the narrative and told people here that everyone in Africa lived in a hut and told them that all of us were gangsters and drug dealers in the U.S. and told people that everybody on the islands came over on banana boats and all that dumb stuff when they controlled the narrative. So now here we are, fast forward to 2023, 2024, and we have an opportunity for the world that's been so big not to be so big and for us to sit down and be like, girl, we got a lot more in common than we got different. We got a lot more in common than we got different. The way we raise our children, we may cook different meals, but we all seem to prepare that food the same. You're not going to walk in one black woman's kitchen. I don't care if she's in Jamaica, if she's in Antigua, if she's in Montserrat, if she is in Nigeria, if she is in Ghana, if she is in Cameroon, if she is in the UK. Okay, and you're not gonna see us washing our food before we cook. Thank you. You're not <laughs> Thank you. getting in a bed without taking a bath. You're not gonna catch us allowing our children to be out of control and running our houses. Like we have so much more in common. And it was absolutely disgusting to me to see somebody come in and mm -hmm. take part in a conversation mm -hmm. to push us further apart. And it worked. Because I saw so many people online saying ignorant stuff and taking part in it and, you know, making jokes about witchcraft and all this. I mean, just it's like, oh, my God, what they wanted to do, they were able to do not on the scale that they wanted to. But the fact that they were able to do it at all, it disturbed me on a cellular level mm -hmm. because that should never happen. Like we're literally as a people, we suffer because we've allowed people to keep us separate. And keep us fighting each other. Period. <laughs> we have a common enemy, and it do, and they don't look like us. Oh, you can. They see don't that look like us. <laughs> we can see that reproduction. Thank you. Yeah. But y'all know what I'm doing on. What's that? Because at this reunion, did you see how when Necrosis was figuring out how everything was going on? how the flashbacks was coming when everybody was giving their opinions. Now she trying to, well, she gave up. Now she's seeing that you was playing for the wrong team. <laughs> I really feel like she was picking up on it. Okay, break it down. Give me some more. Why you say so? Because when Candace and um, Shoulders was going at it, she kept trying uh -huh. to tell Shoulders like, well, that was a step. She apologized for that. You're not accepting that. She's seeing what Candace has been saying this whole time. They breaking down stuff, the fight. When Giselle included Wendy and Mia said what she said, Necrosis was still sitting up there like, yeah, what did she do? She's seeing how these people act. And these are the people who team y'all are on. So oh, I, I didn't even hear her, girl. I had told her out. She was looking like Wait, what? She was looking so confused. The camera panned to her. So if y'all pay attention to it, so I feel like what she's going to I got to go back and watch. Mm -hmm. I've, I've already deleted the episode. <laughs> I didn't know this. If she go on next season, she's going to try to play for the right team because she knows she not effed up. But that's what you get. Wait and a minute, I hope wait, wait, stay wait. on the out with them dusties. See, this is why I'm holding my pearls. That's why I, I, I didn't even take them back off because I had to clutch them. So wait a minute. Do you think she was fresh? She was she was getting hot and bothered with Wendy because like you won't let me come back from this. Like I know I did wrong. Mm -hmm. You won't, won't mm -hmm. let me come back. And then from you were real stupid because production throwing the things, they were giving everything. Like production's throwing the flashbacks. Wendy and Mia breaking it down. Uh, not Mia. Candace. Candace broke it down to timelines. And made Robin look like crap. And now Necrosis, you look like crap because this is the person you was taking up for because you wanted to be on Team Yellow. Which your listen, no, don't. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm stepping my toes back in to help out. You wanted to be on Team okay, Yellow on, so bad. Come on, Kay. Kay, 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 I didn't even believe that because remember, you know, I, 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 I've been busy. I've been traveling, so I haven't been making anything live. But I remember, I think I was here this live when we were talking about NECA and Wendy's Mita. And remember when Wendy walked away and NECA started crying, trying to try do that fake cry. I feel like she, she's been knowing that she screwed up because look at look at the way Ike sat up and said, it's taboo, we don't talk about it. The yeah. way that man was like shook his head and like absolutely not. 
And meanwhile, your wife was a part of the conversation that brought on the show. Cause it, Ashley could have brought, I feel like people are a little weird with this whole, well, Wendy should have had more smoke for Ashley. Wendy knows Ashley. She, she side eyed Ashley. And then when she saw the clip, she saw what Ashley actually said. You saw her when you talked to Ashley on that reunion. The way that I have to play Ashley like a fiddle, beautiful. But regardless, though, still, NECA's responsible for having that conversation with Ashley. Then, NECA, you are the idiot who followed up the O2 conversation with witches, shrines, and voodoo. She's the one who did all that. You followed that up with going to have a conversation with Robin. You never once gave Winnie the benefit of the doubt. So then this whole idea that when Wendy keeps saying, we can be cordial, we're not going to be like friends, we can be cordial and move forward. Oh, you are saying the begging, essentially begging, like, oh my God, da, 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 da. you're trying to ice me out, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that. Because now the lady is saying, we won't be friends, we can be cordial, because you know you screwed up. Because as I said, I listen to a lot of podcasts, to people who live in that area, who will know who are mutual friends with each other. Neta has been very disillusioned with the fact of how she came on the show. And it does seem like she was chasing to be on any reality TV show, because I don't know how you go from LA, you and your husband have never lived together. Never lived together, you just got married. You live in LA, he's a traveling doctor that is stationed in Maryland or wherever. Yeah. You try to show in LA, then you try married to medicine, which is in Atlanta, and then you try in Potomac. Hessa, where do you live? Mm -hmm. So to me, Thank you. And so to me, it does seem like she, she's trying to act like she's just so above it and she doesn't care about this. It seems like you were trying really hard to get on TV. And it seems like you thought that Winnie owed you something. And when she didn't do that, you did your hardest to be like, I'm going to make this my storyline. And when it didn't go your way now, you are so out right about this woman saying we can be cordial, but I'm, I'm good. I'm good on you. Bianca's absolutely right. She's very strange about like that. Because oh, to me, oh. I, I done that whole shake in the head and saying we don't talk about it and shutting that stuff down. I was like, well, well, then why did your wife not be like, I should like that? Yeah, that's crazy. That's Reed. Reed, what's up, girl? Hey, how you doing? Wait, is that my phone? No, that's Bianca static in a little bit. Okay, so all I want to say is this, right? I read the room better than his wife did. I, I peeped game and he realized that his wife let herself get dragged in a situation that had nothing to do with him. And absolutely nothing. And he said that, and he said that sucker down. He's like, we're not going to talk about it. And I wanted, I'm sorry to say this. I wanted to smack neck upside her head because of the fact that you still defending this chick. After she got you into some hot water, not just on the show in public, but in your community. And and everyone's like, oh, well, Aneka ate up Wendy. Like, how did she eat her up? Didn't yeah. I like how Wendy treated her like you treat a kid that is about to interrupt somebody. Wendy's like, okay. listen. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there was nothing. Well, yeah, and that. When but when, I was, I was when she was... When she, when Neka was about to answer the question for Ashley, she was like, "No, no, no, no! You let her answer the question." Sure did. And and, and you know, and it, it just, and I'm like, "Why are you defending Ashley when she made you look like a hot mess?" I don't understand that. And the other thing I don't understand is why is Robin up in everybody's marriages, but she ain't up in her marriage? Cause it ain't Can no somebody, marriage, girl. Now look, Can somebody, look hold on, put it on. Look what Miriam said, y'all. Miriam said, and remember at Ashley's party, Wendy gave Necrosis her number. If she had an issue because Wendy said she felt the girls were trying to pin them against each other. Okay, but this is my thing about that phone number. This is what I want to hit on, right? So Wendy clearly didn't have a problem with you because all she said was she didn't know you, but she still gave you her number. If you felt like Leb, Leb, Lebby or whoever, Told you something. Why didn't you say, girl? Now look, I don't know if this is true, but my cousin, my cousin husband said X, Y, and Z. If it was true, why wouldn't you just call her immediately with it? Because that was your plan. You want to get some get back. And I agree now with what Bianca's saying and what y'all saying is making sense. You too, Re. I feel like maybe this helped her realize I teamed up with the losing team. I teamed up with people that don't nobody like. The crowd don't like them. This was a bad move. Uh, and you know, you know, Nigerians do not like the word fool, the word fool. I know she was called a fool by her husband that night after that reunion because you could see his body language change when he was sitting there. 
saying what the heck has been happening in this thing? What did Eneka put herself into? You you could see his face because he came he looked with embarrassed. Him. He looked embarrassed. He, he said, This is foolishness. <laughs> and my wife is the fool. And she is. Amen. Amen, sister. And Cause this sister here um, is this in Kinsey TV. Yeah, she said that, but I don't believe her. I believe she's lying. I believe she's lying. Because we heard what show she what show she actually filmed for, and it was with Carlos King. We ain't never heard that story before. And it's real convenient that that story is being told now. Nakatara is a liar. And I don't believe nothing she say. She played herself when she came on this show calling that older woman a witch. Now, that's just how I feel. And she should have lied the first time. And I'm still calling bull. Unless somebody from Merit to Medicine come forth to confirm that, I'm sorry. She need more people because she's a liar. She should have just went and brought herself on to Merit to Medicine. I don't believe. Okay, let's th let's think about this, right? Let's think about it logically, right, sisters? So we're talking about somebody who desperately wanted to be on television. Okay, he was desperate. You filmed to be on Carlos King's show. That show fell through, and you immediately, immediately took your behind from L.A. to Maryland to get on this show. If if Merit to Medicine had approached you first, you would have went there. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have come here. You came here because this was your only option. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I but Necrosis is a disgusting person. I don't like Naka, Neka, Nakaka, whatever you want to call that nincompoop. She's a disgusting person. I pray she never comes back. I believe she's a lying piece of crap. And furthermore, <laughs> she should be arrested for her wigs. <laughs> Wait, um, did anyone miss that the clip is missing? And makeup. You remember the trailer that they're, the husbands are still out and Wendy starts speaking Ebo. People oh, have, yeah. have dissertations they about if she's speaking right or not. Yeah. Where is that? To me, Wait, it seems say, like, who said what about what? Like Wendy was talking to Neka and Ebo. Yeah. Remember in the trailer, but it's not there. Yeah. And I'm they cut a lot like, of things out. Yeah, they cut all things out, and it makes me feel also. I don't really know if Nick would be here next season because they're I really. I hope he's not. not. She was we disgusting. She's disgusting. Mm. She's tacky. She has no class, no couth. Her voice is annoying. Um, I'm glad at the reunion at least she found a foundation that was actually close to her complexion. But I don't want to see another microwave ponytail. I don't want to see another synthetic wig covered in blue magic hair grease. I don't want to hear her tell another lie about shrines and witches. Like, I'm just disgusted with her. I think she's a horrible person. I think, I, I feel like everyone who knows her should be absolutely ashamed and embarrassed of her. And, and you know, whoever broke into Dr. Wendy's house, you missed an opportunity. He, they should have broken into her house and stole those wigs and burned them. <laughs> now that's what should happen. I, you know, I'm actually, I want her to come back next year so they can put her through the same stuff that they put Wendy and um and Candace through. So, like... Be interesting. Because at that point, you know why I say that, Ree? Because, number one, she ain't even smart enough to fight back. This girl is dumb as a bag of hair. That's number one. Number two, if they actually light on her... Hey, Princess with the puppy. If they actually light on neck bone, right? they're going to be able to really chew her up because everything she presented is fake. Everything she presented is fake. She lied about where she's from. She told us this cock and bull story about her husband that you never lived with and you ain't unpacked nothing. She might come back and this fool still might, she still might not have a sink and a stove in her kitchen. <laughs> like by the time that, you know what I'm saying? Like this will be the one time team yellow would actually win. And I don't really want, I'm not interested in seeing them win, but they would really, um, they, they would really win if they went up against her. Cause who, how will she defend herself? And we know Wendy ain't going to help her and Wendy mm -hmm. shouldn't. Help her. And I wanted to say one last thing. They, you know, that Andy will never, ever in a million years 
ever say the the name Carlos King. That's why they said that she went to marry to medicine because he will rather like swallow lava than utter Carlos King's name, and we all know that. Because remember, he the thing, Re, though. Um, Andy didn't mention no marriage. She told that lie about marriage to medicine. Andy didn't say that. And you know what else is interesting now that we're talking about it? When she said that, Andy didn't say, "Yeah, that's true." Did he? Mm -mm. He didn't oh, say I that. Real quick. And we know. You Hold mean? On. And we no, know. Wait, wait, no, and we know. No, I just want to say something to what she just said real quick. When she said uh, uh, about the swallowing, she should have referenced Robin instead of Andy. But go ahead. Oh, but anyway, so Andy didn't. Andy didn't say, "Yeah, that's true." And we know Andy is their boss over there too. So had she ever had she actually been approached for merit to medicine, Andy would have said, Yeah, that's true, we did. But Andy didn't say that. Roll the tape. I bet you he didn't. That girl is a liar. Maybe she doesn't sufficiently research her lies because maybe she's not aware that he's also executive producer at Married to Medicine, because that's a very rookie mistake to make in front of the executive producer who would have known that an, an offer had been extended to Ike to come on Married to Medicine. Yeah, because not, and not only that, not only that, oh my. I didn't even see her husband nod in agreement. I didn't even see that. That's why I'm like, girl, by you might have reached out to Married to Medicine trying to get on there, but I don't believe them people reached out. Girl, look at you. Girl, look at you. The raggediest, Wait, the raggediest person <laughs> that they ever invited on Merit the Medicine was Dr. Heavenly. Excuse me. I miss I misspoke. Dr. Hellishly. That was the most raggedy person they ever invited on Merit the Medicine. I doubt they was looking for raggedy number two. You talking about dentist the menace? <laughs> Whatever she is. I, you know I don't watch that show because I don't like Merit the Medicare. <laughs> for those kind of shows. And I'm over it. You know, they, they actually approach you, they come and test with you to find out whether or not you are a match, even before anything right. is device, you know. Right. I don't that's, know. That's what we know, sis. That's what I'm saying. She ain't doing nothing but lying. Mm. Nothing but lying. She desperately wanted to be on TV. She started with Carlos King, and when that fell through, she come trolling in her butt over to Maryland. That's what she did. She had such a desire to be on TV and she was that ill prepared. Yes, girl. <laughs> she that hard to be on TV and didn't buy one decent wig. If I was dying to be, do you know I would have called what's the what's the little boy do all the rappers arrogant Tay? I'd have called Tokyo Styles, I'd have called Alonzo Arnold, I'd have called everybody. She was dying to be on TV and showed up with them synthetic wigs covered in grease. I'm going to say something that's real petty, but oh my gosh, she's an attorney. I wonder if she, I guess Phaedra, this is the only attorney that Phaedra Parks has probably won more cases than her. She should be happy she's an employment and labor attorney because who, Wendy broke her I down. Don't, I, was about to say, I, don't, I don't think she does court cases. I think she just does something else. I don't think she's ever been hit. I think she's a corporate. You know, every lawyer don't go to court. Yeah, all she does is push right. papers. Yeah, because she could not stand to be in the court because they would have tear that woman down. No, she, she doesn't have right. the uh, art of uh, argument, you know, uh, she, the her art of argumentation to present she like a key. Slow. She's slow. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well. She's slow. <laughs> uh, see, at the end of the day, people, people like to slander Phaedra because I guess it's cute to slander Phaedra. But let's be honest, Phaedra was practicing um, law before she got on that TV show and nobody was complaining about her. She's proven she's not slow because she continues to make money hand over fist, not just with Willie Watkins, but the fact that she, she dates in the upper echelon, like she moves in the right circles. So it's like, we can make comments about Phaedra, but this girl can't hold a candle to Phaedra Parks. And I don't even like Phaedra like that, but she can't hold a candle to Miss Parks. In, in any arena, not on hair, makeup, clothing, looks, figure, career, education, intelligence, nothing. Have you seen Fedra in person? Why do I need to? <laughs> okay. <laughs> but this girl can't hold a candle, 
and we know that. Oh, we got somebody else want to come up. Come on. Hello. Hi. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Hi, Samisha. Hi, everyone. I've just been like back, back, um, just kind of reading the comments, listening. And I'm kind of, I know like I may be like, not no, not everyone is team NECA here, but I actually, I mean, this whole season, I can admit, has just been like crazy. Like it's been like a roller coaster ride. But I really have to give like NECA the benefit of the doubt. I feel that she's been like pretty consistent with her story. Um, like from her claims as far as like what happened, which. And I think that when you're breaking up baby we can't hear you everything you just said say it again like i just feel that like people are not really giving her the like we're we're not giving her grace you know we're not giving her grace because of you know people feel like she is in with the green eye bandits and also like people feel like she has been trying to you know uh, like she's fighting with her Nigerian sister Wendy, but I feel like this reunion stilled everything I needed to know when it comes to like what actually transpired backstage as far as Wendy and Neka. Like I think that Wendy, okay, production approached Wendy that hey, we have this girl, she's Nigerian. I feel like you should introduce her to the show. And That's not what they Wendy. did. They they went to Wendy and said, "We we have someone who that you know that wants to come on the show. We have someone that you know." And Wendy said, "I don't know you." They didn't say she's Nigerian. You should bring her. That's not what they said. They said, "We have someone that you know." No, they said we have someone that you know that you guys run in the same circle. That's what they said. You guys run in the same. That's what. That's what. That's she what said, said no. no. Wendy said who. They said the name. She said, I don't know her. That's what happened. We can't put no sauce on it. We leave, we leave the sauce for Giselle. We can't put no sauce. Do you know how many people I say hi to that I have no idea who the heck they are? You better okay, say but, it again. Okay. Especially that you know, example. If you guys remember in the second episode, Wendy was like, Wendy was like, Hey, nice to meet you. Knowing that they've already met before, don't you guys think that's kind of like weird? That strange. No, that's, that's the same no. no, it's not. No, no it's not. Let me when tell you encounter, when you encounter somebody, never met her. I've seen you, and I've spoken she to she you. She doesn't know. She says she doesn't know. Ask, ask now. Let me answer. Okay, me go seeing ahead. you somewhere and having spoken to you, that's not meeting you. If you're coming into a friend group, and I'm actually taking time to get your name extend my hand oh hey girl nice to meet you i met i'm now i'm meeting you you seen me around before two or three times and i've done this i didn't meet you i've spoken to a lot of people don't mean i met you so no it's not strange what's strange is what what hold on what is strange is that because wendy said i simply don't know her her getting all hot and bothered huffing and puffing and bringing out that unsightly vein in her neck that's what was strange what you mad for because somebody don't know you she don't but know you. she said she doesn't know when she's met when and which is true they met they met at a pheno concert which is true they did meet. they met at even well unite next they her. met in a she said hello to you she said so they literally so let me ask said, you this. Hold on. but let me ask you this by that mm -hmm. logic let me just answer this question. I'm going to ask you something else. Have you ever mm -hmm. gone anywhere and had a chance to like wave at someone or someone waved at you and you waved back? By that, by that, right? By that logic, everyone that you've ever waved at or waved back at you, you've met that person. Every one of them. Oh, uh, yes, but that's not the instance. <laughs> with, no, okay, okay, I'm saying... I'm saying that's not the instance with this case with Wendy and Neka. They it wasn't just like a high and bite. They said they talked for extended amount of time. No, this is not no. just a, can can I go ahead and say something? Can I say something? I'm gonna be honest go with you. With my go job, ahead. I can meet you and we can talk for hours 
and I will come back to the same location and I can't remember who the heck you are. Thank you. Right, I don't know. But, but we have to offer Nigeria's DMV community is very small. It's it's okay. And Neka's not a part of that. They, right. they you know, she's not a part of that, but her husband is. There her husband, her um husband, extended family, they're all part of that. And her sister, so she said her sister lives, they were in the same circle. So it's Libby's not her sister, sister. that's her cousin in law. Circles because if they ran in the same circles, right. they wouldn't I'm talking about Neka's sister. Them. She said her sister lives in a DMV. Maybe right? then we're going from Neka to Neka's sister. And so now, family. so now I was about to ask, so is this about Nakatata or her sister? The oh, she, no, can I go I'm saying and, that uh, okay, go ahead. Can I go ahead and say something. My sister's a dancer. My sister knows a whole bunch of people. Like my sister has friends that know celebrities. I will go to a concert. They will come up to me and be like, hey girl, how are you doing? I'm like, hey. And my friends are like, do you know them? I'm like, that's my sister's friend. I don't, they're not my friend, but I know of them because of my sister, because that's their friend. And that was the thing with Lebe and Neka's sister. They were friends and it just ended up, it was a war between the two of them and somehow NECA and Wendy got dragged into it. You done messed it up, Reed, because this was not about Nakatata's sister. We're, we're still talking they, about NECA and NECA and Wendy. You got to hold on. You got to keep it straight. Levy mm -hmm. was friends with Wendy's sister. So th there is no two, three degrees of separation because my husband's got a cousin who's friends with your sister. That means that I know you because I saw you twice. That's weird. Nakatata is weird. She was desperate to be on television. When Carlos King's show crashed, she went running over there because she thought, I know somebody who knows somebody who knows something about it, and I'm going to get on this show. And she wanted Wendy to do the fake, fake, I'm going to bring you in and pretend to know you, like Portia did with Fallon, and ended up doing the horizontal polka with Shrek. Like nobody, she when she had an actual friend that she's known five years that she wanted to introduce, that actually makes more sense. It's weird to me that that nincompoop is angry because somebody said they don't know her. I don't know you. That's nothing to I be just, pissed off about. The fact that she was pissed off about that, all that does to me is tell me the type of person you are. You're a weirdo. Yes. And you're mm -hmm. yes, listen, she, listen she here, auntie. Was, this is what it was. She said that she did. It's not that she said that she's upset that Wendy doesn't know her. She said she she herself that she doesn't even know Wendy like that. She said they she had lying to herself. She was. And Jenna, that's, hold that's on. Thing. Let her get it out. Go ahead, baby. She said that they met in they met in passing. She said she said that she doesn't even know Wendy like that. They met in passing. Which they talk. This is an intimate gathering. Umbo Unites in DC. VIP, 10 people. They they met in passing. And then what she found weird is that the first time that they met, like they they uh, filmed together, Wendy was like, Hey, nice to meet you. Which to me, I will also find that kind of strange to say, like you met before. This is not like this is not our first time meeting each other. Like they met before, they kind of run in the same similar circle. So why would you kind of have that like approach if this is someone that you talk to at a convention, you go unite at a concert, VIP, you guys go in and it's just not like a hey bye thing. It's like actually have a conversation. Hold on, hold on. Okay, y'all done talk. Let let baby girl get this out. Now let me ask you this. So mm -hmm. who said that they held a conversation? Because nobody said that. That's a team. That's what Nick in the reunion, third part of the reunion, Nick said that I you probably have to rewatch that, but she said that mm -hmm. she said they had a conversation. Even we will unite, which is a convention. It's like all, you know, it's a convention that happens in, it can happen in different cities. Yeah, but just because um, you were in a VIP don't mean that that lady talked to you. Because, I, I, okay, I got you. But now, do you recall mm -hmm. earlier in the season, that wasn't her story. She claimed that, that Wendy spoke to her and it was all glares and eyebrows. I distinctly remember that tacky hooker saying that. So now all of mm -hmm. a sudden it's a conversation and she should have remembered this conversation. And let me me go even further if she spoke mm -hmm. to you at that place and said hi and according to nakatata it was glares and eyebrows and then when she sees you again and says nice to meet you why would that be shocking it sounds like you weren't memorable you didn't make an impression darling so she said nice to meet you that was your opportunity to make an impression if you wanted to 
But even at that, why is that a reason to be angry? So if someone really is saying nice to meet you, why are you angry over that? Why were you so angry that you then made up a whole story calling this woman's mother a witch? Why did you call her a female dog? Why did you bring your ignorant tout of a husband to try to fight her husband? Like, why would you run around making rude comments, doing thumbs down, acting like an ignorant kid, looking like you looking? Why would you do all that? And then huff and puff at a reunion for a lady who really didn't even give you 10 minutes of conversation the whole season. What you mad for? Wendy ain't spoke to her for 10 solid minutes. Why she mad? But, okay, Sunitra, she's not actually angry about that. She's angry because of the shrine, con like the shrine, like we know that how that but is. She's the one who told the she lie, so why is she mad? You're I don't think Nanaka's lying though. Nanaka's not lying. I don't, I do believe that Wendy's mom actually did call Nanaka. I do. I actually do it's believe that Wendy's mom called she, Wait, 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 hold on. You say you believe Nick, that Wendy's mama did what to, to, not, to necrosis? She did what to her? I, I think that she did call Nanaka. I do, I do think but that she, she did. did. But she hold on. Did. Wait a minute. First of all, the whore's name is her. Her, her actual name is Ineka, not Naneka. Mm -hmm. OK, I, I can pronounce her name. I just refuse to because I don't respect her. So as far as That's necrosis, <laughs> necrosis never said that Wendy's mother called her. Necrosis said she called Lebe. She called Lebe and showed a screenshot of a phone call for nine minutes. Not a transcript of the phone call. Nobody to say what said what got said on the phone call when she brought Lebe on the show, Lebe didn't even say in front of the camera what Miss Susan supposedly said to her. So what Necrosis actually did do was come on the show and claim that somebody told me that this lady said something. But I didn't hear that she said it, but I'm going to go on a rampage and accuse this old woman and call her a witch. And then I'm going to get real mad because Wendy won't give me a conversation over it. So again, you brought the story secondhand from Lebe, who you brought on the camera, who didn't even confirm it on film. And now you're angry because Dr. Wendy don't want you calling her mama a witch. What's she mad for? Okay. So the thing is that Neneka. In Neneka. Right? Not Neneka. In, okay, Neka. Okay. Neka. Okay. Let me help everybody one time because I don't, you know, unlike her, I'm not a tacky Ebo who wants to be accepted by yellow people who hate black people. Okay. So I'm going to give you all a quick lesson. When it comes to Ebo alphabet, when you see the two ends, that is in, in is the sound. It's not nene, it's in. Okay. Got it. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> now I'll start talking about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Neka, right? So, Neka. I don't think she's not upset with the whole, okay, me, because that's kind of like, you know, I think she's more upset because what her mom, Wendy's mom, calling this whole shrine, I think she's more upset about it. And I don't, I think that actually did happen. I do believe that Nick, um, Wendy's mom did say those things to Neka or her or Lebe. She did she say those say things. Nothing to Nick, she never spoken to the girl. So when did she say it to her? I believe that she related to Lebe. I do believe that she said that. I do. Based on what? Lebe didn't even tell us she said it. We just got so, we, Lebe we doesn't have to. Yeah, Lebe, Lebe wasn't asked. She wasn't asked about that on camera. She wasn't. Lebe wasn't asked but about she that. Was and this is, and was on Nick camera. Was but Lebe was on camera with Neckbone talking about Wendy. And your, her issue with Wendy was about the whole shrine comment. So why would that not come up? Because she's talking because this is what transpired. They're being transparent. This is what has happened. Like this is like this is this this whole thing is playing out on camera went while they are filming. Life. But everything is centered around the shrine lie. So if Lebe is there and you're talking about Wendy and your only issue with Wendy is the shrine lie, why because would you not say she, because Wendy's Lebe, Wendy, you're the one that told me that, that Mama Wendy, Wendy said she was gonna take my name to a shrine? Because Wendy's mom made the call. She's this is all this is whole this the whole thing is rooted because Wendy's mom made a call made the call and we're not all in the team about it. She made the call made a phone call call to someone who was close friends with her daughter Ivy that automatically mm -hmm. means that she took her name to a shrine. 
I believe that. Yes, I do. I believe that. I believe that. What, you, mom, I heard you say you believe it, baby. I'm asking you, you believe it based on what? What is that based because on? Because Wendy's mom does not want to make us, she don't want to make us to interact or be a part of this group because okay. the whole thing is Wendy, so they wanted Wendy to be the only, that's the whole, that's the thing that we're missing. Like Wendy wants something. to be the only Nigerian on this but show. That's the whole thing what? that we're according missing. To that, according to whom? That's all conjecture. How do we know? How do we know that? The whole, the, like, Sinitra, and how everything is playing out. We watched it. We watched the third episode. Third episode. No, and I'm trying to understand where did you get that they wanted her to be the only Nigerian on the show? Which part of what we heard gives lends credence to that? That she wanted to be the whole. I mean, it. 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 We can. We can all see that. It's something we can. All no, we can't. Like one of those, we, no, no. It's like literally, there's almost there's 450 people in here. Ain't nobody in the chat saying they see what you saw. So you need to help us understand it. Help us see what you see. What is this based on? It's based on how everything has transpired. How, how it transpired? Okay. Give me specific. From the root. I'm gonna tell you from the root of it because of Wendy. You met this girl at a con convention. She, yes, I agree that maybe she didn't, like you guys didn't know each other, but you guys talked. And then the show, the producer said, hey. Point, of, point, of, point, point, point of correction. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, according, according to Neckbone, Neckbone said all she got was glares and eyebrows. So what was the talk? You no, know, she said they, they had Neckbone, a conversation. That's what, that's what, hold on. That's what Neckbone said. So if it's a lie, Neckbone told it. So did Nick Bone tell the truth about the glares and eyebrows, or did Nick Bone tell the truth about the conversation? See how that works? She told two different no. stories. So which I one? Think she told, she, uh, can she I have something? A, she said they had a conversation at a convention where it was but like VIP. That the show that it was. Wait a minute, because I remember clear and I keep notes. She mm -hmm. said that she was surprised that Doctor Wendy was warm and friendly because when she. She met her before. It was all glares and eyebrows. Put a one in the chat if y'all remember that line hooker saying that. Because mm -hmm. I remember her saying that. So if she claims that Dr. Wendy was the opposite of warm and friendly, therefore she was surprised. And before, all she got was glares and eyebrows. When did the conversation happen with a lady who was not warm and friendly and gave you glares and eyebrows? When was this conversation? I think it was two instances, Sanitra. No, nah, it's two. all a lie, and a lie don't care who tell it. What? So I'm still trying to understand with this girl giving us multiple different stories, and it all boils down to this lady simply saying, I don't know you. Not to mention the conversation between her and this rabid mongoose, who then, when Wendy asked her directly, what did I do to you? And that tramp couldn't answer the question, what's she mad for? You, she couldn't even tell Wendy what she did to her. What she mad for? It just sounds like Neca keeps getting, letting herself get dragged into fights that have nothing to do with her. Look okay. at Ashley. Look at Leba. Like she, she was shocked that Wendy was very warm to her. Wendy's your coworker. I mean, Thank when you. I meet my new coworkers. I'm very warm to them. I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm not going to tell this is a bad so company. So to make a comment about it. And then turn around and now you're angry because the lady said she didn't know you. She don't know you. If she didn't want you there, she wouldn't have been warm and friendly. I said I tell people I don't I have family members I don't know. <laughs> but any me personally, I think that somebody said that they don't know you, but they were still friendly and still warm to you. Like, what is your real problem? Like, girl, you just mad because that girl wouldn't vouch for you to get on that show. Now, that's what you mad about. And you'll get over it. If you ain't mad at the people that sold you them $20 wigs, you need to get over the fact that Wendy didn't know you. Hey, Too Faced. I don't, I, I don't think that she needed Wendy to vouch for her to get on the show. The producers already approached Obviously, her. She didn't need Wendy to get on, on the show. And try to attack Wendy, and it didn't work. It fell flat. So now tell me I this. Think... Once, once Wendy paid her no attention... Why didn't that hooker give us any more storyline? Why we didn't get a storyline after Wendy got out of her way? Everybody else was talking to her. Everybody else was friendly with her, including Candace and Karen and everybody. Why didn't that help her give us more of a storyline? Why was she so? Because she was. Be because she was. She did. She told us that they iced her out. 
Yeah, that everybody <laughs> iced her out by inviting her everywhere. I ain't never seen an ice out like that because we saw what they did to Monique. Yeah, because I'm like, how did they ice you out? And there's like only two people really that messes with Wendy. So Thank how you. did Wendy influence these other people to ice you out? Like, make it make sense. One plus one is not adding up. She loved the lie. She loved the lie. When and actually, I, my thing is this. Like I said, now you can look like a mongoose so you can be a liar, but you should never do both. Too feisty, what you got? I, I just wanted to jump in real quick. Sanitra, hi. How you doing? Good evening, everybody. Good evening okay. to the panel. I have been enjoying the conversation I've been getting my life. Thank you for the dialect and uh, phonetics um, lesson that you gave earlier. I live for it. I just want to say one thing about this specific part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, how is it that she got iced out when, in fact, her beefing with Wendy gave her a bigger entrance into the Thank group? Because God knows if you go against Wendy and Candace, they welcome you with open arms. Open the yes. Middle. Say it again. That's why I'm like, what is this tramp mad for? Like, literally, you went against Wendy. Team Yellow pretended to like you the whole season. They even bought you a crown from Party City and clowned the hell out of you, and you were too dumb to know it. So how were you iced out, baby? Wendy not speaking to you did you a favor. I don't think that she was trying to go against Wendy. I think that she was trying you to hold Wendy You don't think she was trying to go against call Wendy a whole female yeah. dog and her mama a witch? Be yeah. Because... Susan did call, make the call. Susan did say those things. Like you can, we can't oh, negate the truth. Come on, now. We to can't who? negate the truth. Was part of the conversation, so she said it. We can't negate the truth. And she also, no, 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 and it has been I know I wasn't on the phone. We don't, yeah, because I, we're, we're not there. We're not there. That's, uh -uh, no, 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 no. Woo, woo, woo. That's what mm -hmm. we don't do on this court. But we don't know stuff. We don't go saying somebody did something. Nobody wasn't on that phone but Mama Susan and Libby. So if those were the two people on the phone, the only two people that can certify what happened on that phone would have been Mama Susan and Lebe. Mama Susan say she ain't said it. We ain't heard Lebe say a god darn thing. So how the hell do we know what was to get on that phone? And by the way, Awa, thank you for the super sticker, sis. I appreciate the support. Yes, thank you, Awa. That was, oh, that was you. Awesome. Was but yeah, we wasn't on that phone, so ain't no, oh, it's the truth. Because who? Because who? Because the two people on the phone, one person said it didn't happen, the other one ain't said a god darn thing. And the only person talking is a tacky hooker with a greasy wig that wasn't on the phone. So how, how do we know what's true and what ain't? Wendy's mom could have told her that her jollof rice was terrible and it was burnt for all we know. Right. And, and actually, Re, what Miss Susan said made more sense. She called because Lebe and Ivy got into it. So she called about the two girls that were friends. Why would she mm -hmm. call about those? Don't nobody even know you, girl. My, my question to the caller is, you, with all that you said, mm -hmm. what did Wendy do? You still talking about Wendy, mama, Wendy, sister, with this person, that person. You still ain't saying nothing that Wendy did to want to this her helpful. to come at her like that. So my question to you directly is, what did Wendy do? Can you tell me that? I can tell you she was warm to her. That's what Wendy did. Yep, that's that. That's a crime. She shouldn't have she been warm. Warm. She shouldn't have been warm. warm. She should have been warm. She should have gave her some more glares and eyebrows like she claimed she got, got the last time. That's what she should have did. Oh, that's I what I did. Okay. Ain't nobody asked for what Wendy did while she's sitting up here going on with this narrative. You talking Girl. about everybody else and their mama and their cousin and their brother. What did Wendy do? Nothing, because girl Wendy said it again tonight, and that heifer was still quiet as a hooker at a at a revival meeting. Ain't they even nothing. played the replay? Ashley started all of that mess. They played the replay. So what are we defending here? I've been sitting up here this whole long. Ain't time nothing to defend. defend. Ain't nothing to defend. I want to know, Miss SC, what did Wendy do? Yeah, please tell us, regale us with the with the stories of what Wendy did to that trifling. I believe that when I, I mean, this whole thing stems from what what occurred 
behind the scenes. That that's the whole thing stems from. It did. Like that's the whole thing. Let's say. Let's, 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 what did you not hear the question? She said, "What did Wendy do?" Okay, at that table, pick a ball. Naneka was a. You know, she's try, she was trying to bring up the conversation about like everything that's happened and stuff. Wendy completely like Wendy completely was like, no, this is not pretty much gaslighting the Naka, right? How like not, her, not telling her not, her not taking accountability yeah. what did yeah. transpire. And this what is, is the accountability that was when she didn't do nothing with her. That was after what the did Wendy do? One, I would say like it was the whole like gaslight, let's the whole gaslighted situation, like not negating the fact that you know that this something did transpire. Like this is what happened and you're According you're to whom? Naneka. 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 Well, hold on. In order for us to say okay, let, 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 let's take away the let's say, wait a minute, sugar. Mm -hmm. In order in order for us to say that something that Wendy knew something happened that 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 would have to mean that we know something happened. How do we know something happened at all? How do we know? And and you always come back to this to this mysterious conversation for nine minutes between Lebe and Mama Susan that nobody was a party to, but Lebe and Mama Susan, and we got Neckbone telling us something happened on the conversation that she was not a part of. And that's her battle flag. And we still have not heard anything that Wendy did to this lady. Other than you telling us that Wendy knew about something that may or may not have even taken place. Doesn't make sense. Just like but Nick Wendy, doesn't make sense. The fact well, we that she got up there because Wendy said, well, then go on, clear the F up then. And she went to calling bees and all this other stuff with her stiff <laughs> wig. She did all that. Yeah, because Wendy retaliated back by cursing at her. She said, "Clear it the f up." She didn't call her no name. She, she did. She did. Hold on. No, she, didn't, she, she didn't call her no name. Not just the at that instant. She she did call her the girl said after Wendy called her on the lie. After Wendy called her on the lie, she said, "Well, I was about to clear it up." And Wendy said, "Well, clear it up." Then she didn't say, "Clear it up, you ugly mongo." She didn't say, "Clear it up, Thor for Doom." She didn't say, "Clear it up, you clown." She said, "Clear it the f up." Nobody told her at that point. Necrosis should have uh, basically could have said, "Well, girl, I'm about to clear the f up." Why did she go to call on her female dog? Why did she have her village tout husband acting like he wanted to fight Eddie? With the you don't know me, bro. you don't know me, bro. They are clowns. Oh, they are just uh, they are disgusting clowns. And she allowed herself to be a tool to bring in xenophobic topics. So that they can be flung around because they've been trying to do it ever since they had a West African woman on this show. And what she did is inexcusable. It is unforgivable. It is unconscionable. It is disgusting. It is deplorable. And I think she is a bottom feeder, an alley cat, and the worst of the worst of all of us. And I am very grateful to say that I don't know anybody in my real life, not one of my sisters, that is the, that that is is as disgusting as this. Knock a na 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 nincom poop, poop idiot person. Like I don't know anybody that disgusting. Too feisty. What else you had, girl? I have a question. Okay. So y'all just just roll with me for this one. Let's lean into the understanding that Wendy's mother did say. No, we're not gonna to lean into that because that lady ain't said that. But what else? Well, this is what I this is what I was gonna say about it. Okay. Why is it that we instinctively thought that shrines were negative? Because, you know, as someone who, who loves history and culture, shrines are typically positive in nature. Shrines are typically used for worship and prayer. We see shrines every day on the side of the road at the scene of a tragic accident. I know, people... but, my, but my problem with that, I'm going to stop you right there. My problem with that is that shrines should have never been a topic of conversation. Because it shouldn't have been. Because there's such a negative connotation. To and that was intentional. One, right, exactly. And that's my problem. To bring that's what I was going to go with it. I just, just, this right. is just let me just, just roll with me just for a little bit. Okay. And but I like, I understand about like, I just don't want to get into the history of shrines and conversation about shrines because I find it ignorant. I find the fact that that is a topic of conversation to be ignorant. I find it to be reckless to have that conversation in America with American people who have most of which 
have absolutely no understanding of any culture outside of their own. So I'm never going to entertain that conversation. But I will say that's why I found it disgusting that shrines became a topic of conversation for a largely American audience that's going to naturally give it a, a negative connotation and, and open up a conversation for is it a good shrine or a bad shrine when as far as we know there was no conversation about a shrine at all it was we, we don't know that that conversation took place and the fact that anything that may have happened between Libby and wendy's mother i can't i can't think of her name at the moment miss susan mama susan we people instinctively thought because okay just again as someone who has um elders in her family that are people of faith I can name a million times I've heard elders say that they're going to pray for their enemies. It, it's not always a negative thing. It, But bringing it to this show, everything that has happened from the moment it was discussed, which I believe off camera, we know there's a pattern of behavior with these ladies. Yep. It was always intended to be presented a certain way to demonize that woman. And they use, it's always intentional. Even down to everything that Giselle has done in previous history, Giselle and both Robin, they intentionally- I agree. And can I, can I, can I put you back on that, sis? I yes. feel like this also the reason the reason why they wanted to bring this negative, nasty conversation to be xenophobic so bad was mm -hmm. because after after Miss Susan said what she said about Mia and she said Holy Ghost fire, they tried to turn it into voodoo because she was speaking to both. You know, when you're dealing with conquered people, unless you're speaking one of the colonizers' languages, it must be witchcraft. Ooh, ooga booga. And, and I think and that in media, then, I feel like from then they wanted to, you know, say, "Oh, you're African, you're a witch," but they were afraid to do it, so they brought in a flunky, they brought in an idiot and a greasy dude. So, so can I we get away with doing it? Because I, I want to say something. Too. Yes, is that Tandra? No, this is Kinsey. I want to say something too. Um, well, I coming from I'm a I'm an Evo girl, so coming from an Evo girl perspective, I don't, you know, I don't think Miss Susan meant it like that. I feel like you know she meant it a different way. But I am going to have to. Um, okay. You an Evo, Evo girl? I am. I am. That's why, like this you're whole thing, evil. like I feel like you're not, you're not so evil. I'm my Sebo, of course. Uh huh. I'm my Sebo. Uh -huh. No, no, no. I didn't ask you, are you Ebo? I asked you, do you speak Ebo, darling? So if that's the case, why is it that you can't Ebo. pronounce her girl name? Why are you calling her Naneka? No, I never pronounced her name. Naneka. So why were you calling her Naneka? Were you raised here or were you raised in Ebo land? Where are you I was from? Raised, Where were you raised? I was, I was raised here. So you don't speak Ebo well? I speak Igbo. So why were you calling her Naneka? It's Neka. Mm. Strange, but go ahead. <laughs> um, I would say that I don't think that Miss Susan like meant it like that. As far as like the whole like, I feel like like when she said Holy Ghost fire. Yes, it's a term of like a lot of Igbo. Uh, Nigerian mothers it's use that. Just a term. It's, it's, that's not just a term, dear. That's a matter of prayer. If I if I go into war prayer warfare prayer right now, I'm going to call for Holy Ghost fire. That's not a term. I, I, a I, I was just, mm -mm, no, I think that when it comes to the whole like um, no, that's when real. it comes to the whole Mia and Mia situation, no, I feel like she actually meant it like that. Like it's not. I don't think she was using it in prayer terms. Absolutely not. No, um, she, she was absolutely using it in a prayer term. Now it would have been different had she said thunder fire you, but she didn't. She literally said Holy Ghost fire. Nobody's using Holy Ghost fire as a term, really. Is this, yes, is they this do. really what we do? Yeah. Yes, Sinitra. Yes, they do. Yes, they this do. Is really what we're doing, girl. Uh, Can we, I we doing, uh, we, we doing all of this for Naneka? I'm, we're doing all of this for Naneka. Why, why do we feel like we're doing this for Naneka? I don't think yeah, we're doing this for Naneka. I mean, if I'm being real, baby, most Me? of what you said ain't made no sense. If I'm trying to connect dots and I'm coming up with nothing. We yeah, doing all I, this for because, because we're you're seeing it one way and I'm seeing it in a different way. No, I don't I, think that we're no, doing I it. actually see what's in front of me and I'm not making up stuff, adding juice, adding sauce, and 
Come and we're also, I'm also being crazy. So it's not like, about making it. It's not about making it going on. We doing all this for Nanaka. For Nanaka. That's what we doing this for. Is it okay if I say something real quick? Yes, darling. Okay, so I'm I mean, I'm a Catholic just like Wendy and her mom is. So when they were saying the term shrine, for me, you can people migrate to shrines to go pray at shrines in the Catholic religion. But listen, but before you go any further, I made it clear before I'm gonna reiterate. We're yeah. not gonna have a shrine conversation. We're not. Oh no, because, I, that's, I, because that's what they intended for us to do. And we're no. not going to fall into that trap. I'm I, aware of Catholic churches being the shrine of this Madonna, the shrine of that. We're not going to have the shrine conversation. It was really thought out, and we're not going to participate. For, for I get me, yeah. So for me, the way that she used it was very disrespectful because of of what she of how she made it seem like she made it seem like it was a terrible thing. But like I, I, I just. Like for me, I just felt like she just came in there with an agenda and a vendetta just against Wendy and her mom. And my thing is, a girl growing up in the Caribbean community, I don't know if Haitian princess can, uh, I'm Haitian empress, you can probably confirm this. You don't talk about somebody's mother. You don't you disrespect sure the don't. other. That's everybody. Because, you sure don't. Because now you're asking for, for pretty much to get, you know, piled on. You don't do that. Like you do not disrespect an elder. You don't disrespect children. And the way that she came about it, it was just so disrespectful all around. Mm -hmm. That was my problem with Aneka. Aneka. That was my whole problem with her this season. Like she was just so disrespectful, and she was just letting these girls just lead her blindly. And she, like I said, I have the way she did exactly what she intended to do. And then not only to, you know, insult someone's mother, but you call this old woman a witch. Like, are you mad? Are you really mad? And let's go even further. And then I'm going to drop it because all that witch talk pissed me off this season. If you really thought that woman was a witch, you'd have never said it out loud. Amen. Very clear. If you really thought she was a witch, you'd have never said it out loud. You'd have been too afraid that you were going to wake up clucking like a chicken. Cut because the crap. Cultural like that girl movie. is so full. Like I'm telling you, I have tried all season not to mention how unattractive she is. I have tried. Lord knows I have tried. God is my witness. Uh, I have tried. But she's so full of garbage. She's so full of garbage. And it was the it, Bianca is the one that drove it home for me, y'all. Tandra dropped. I guess Tandra will come back. I hopefully, but Bianca drove it home for me that this heifer probably realized she jumped on the wrong team, and now she's huffing and puffing like the big bad wolf because Wendy won't give her an easy way back. I hope Wendy never gives her an easy way back. I hope Wendy never gives her a conversation. I hope she continues to pay her dust and look at her like something on the bottom of her shoe because that's what she is. That essence article. And if she does come back, I hope that that whore buys a stove by then. The essence article. That's what it is. They didn't think it would get that big. They thought it was just going to be some discourse on Twitter. Thought we were all going to keep quiet. Mm -hmm. That article for essence really shook things up at Bravo a little bit. Now I don't know if they're going to respond the way they need to respond, but they had to address it this time. Previously, whenever there was outrage about a lot of things that took place. They never really addressed it in the way that they should, but they had to this time. That Essence article was un, um, unexpected. They didn't expect, I'm going to tell you something else they didn't expect because they think they're so smart. They thought they planned this mess out. This was going to be the takedown of Wendy and Candace. This whole season, that was their whole thing. We're going to come after Candace, we're coming after Wendy. And they didn't expect the Essence article to happen, but they also did not expect for the audience, for the viewing audience to clock their tea that quick. We clocked their tea so quick. And I mean clocked it so quick to the extent that they got heavy backlash. Heavy backlash. Like you can count the people who bought the garbage and went along with it. You can almost count them on one hand. Like it ain't a lot of people that bought the crap and it backfired. I think that was the reason while we got to see Andy Cohen going on um, Kelly Clarkson show with Wendy and Candace and pretending to like them. Oh, what I like about these ladies is that they're so intelligent. No, you don't. 
that's what pisses you off about these ladies is that they're so intelligent that you can't really run game on them. They're smarter than you. And I like the fact that Candace quit after what we watched tonight, the fact that we had footage from that fight and Giselle still lied and had to be told by Mia. Talk like to the, Talk hmm? to Talk to the, the grand empress of all liars had to tell Giselle that's not true. Giselle should, she, she should hide her face, but she's too disgusting to realize that what she did and the way she behaves is absolutely shameful. It's shameful. Like the, their whole takedown plan fell flat. Shanna is a new member. Y'all welcome our newest sister to the Royal family. Welcome Shanna. We love you, but it didn't work. Like it failed miserably. Andy tried to help him again tonight. The whole reunion, actually, he's been trying to help them. Production has tried to help them by not rolling tape, by not showing the stuff that was said that they that didn't make make it to the cutting room floor there were so many things that simply did not make it just didn't make it they tried andy tried all night long he tried to make wendy a villain oh you didn't check on kiana okay they already covered that baby we already covered that you call me a slow well she is slow and i shout out to wendy for holding it down this girl told us North Carolina and Maryland made her by coastal. Yes, she's slow. That was classic to me. And hands down, the best part of the whole night to me was Wendy making Ashley, telling Ashley, explain to us what Osu is. Explain it. That was the best. Explain. I could have poured myself a shot of scotch and took a nap after that. That was the best for me. Explain she it. On mute. She was on mute. Look around, everybody on mute. <laughs> no, Ashley oh, looked God. like a deer cut in the headlights. Like she was stunned when Wendy said, explain it. And when she stopped the Nika, it was pure gold. Hmm. I have a question. It was. It was golden. You know what, though? I, at that moment, I saw the professor come out. Because isn't that how our professors and our teachers used it to is. do it? Like when you were talking in it class. Is. And mm -hmm. they were sleeping and they knew you weren't paying attention. Go ahead and explain to us about the last thing we just covered. Like the way she did it, I was like, Ooh. And when the friend wants to step in to help the other yeah, one, like, no, 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 no. This no, no. is not your time to speak. This ain't it's your her. question. Yeah. This is her question. Baby. <laughs> you own that spotlight. So that's it. Exactly. And... Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was a great moment. <laughs> it was, it was as equally great when she said that people did not have the range to discuss colorism. It was mm -hmm. equally as satisfying. Mm -hmm. That was wonderful. Yeah, Wendy has given Wendy has given us a lot of quotables this reunion. To she did me. I feel like if you go if you go to a reunion and we don't get no quotables from you. You didn't do nothing. Chris Bassett gave us more, more quotables than um than than everybody on Team Yellow. I don't think they gave us any quotables. Did they? No. Nope. I think the tears, down. tears, and the laughing. I don't know. To me, these are not things that are memorable. They just show the darkness in their souls more mm -hmm. than anything. It's not intellectually curious in any fashion. It's just juvenile banter so to me they, they didn't bring anything and very frankly karen did not bring much either and she, uh, she, she tried really did. she tried but she did but you know she gave us she gave us a little moment her and ray gave us a nini and greg moment now we got to give them that that was cute when she when she said i felt like it was my duty to make it known that she was in north potomac that, that was to me classic petty silly housewife stuff and then the fact that uncle ray jumped in when andy said well what part of potomac are you in and uncle ray central. said central. <laughs> central yeah no that was funny no that was funny that, that was, was cute funny. so at least karen and ray gave us a cute moment now no, we can't karen say you know some good comedic timing um yeah and it was cute it was so you know i love uncle ray I didn't like him and Karen trying to be racy the other year, but you know, I like Uncle Ray. They was they're cute to me. They gave us a cute moment. And nobody on Team Yellow and their husband gave us any cute moments. We had you were husbands pretending well, to have really have husbands there on that side. 
Well, she counts me out. So. Who they gonna have the moments with? The chairs? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Only one person on one person on team yellow. Karen's on the fence. Mia got Gordon, but what was Gordon gonna do? Gordon <laughs> apparently is sick. Yeah, Gordon, Gordon talking about he got the bipolar that make him forget. That sound like all the time or at least half the time or something. Mia and Gordon got all kinds of problems whenever it's time oh. to renew a contract. Geriatric what? support is still support. <laughs> Let's <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Oh, Tandra's back, y'all. Hey Tandra, Tandra, don't run away. Tell me something good. Yes. Tandra. Can you hear me? Hello. Okay, say one more. Okay, Tandra, are you here? <laughs> Come on, y'all. Maybe her mic isn't working. Or, do you have ear earphones in or earbuds? Tandra? I feel, I feel like we can hear her. <laughs> I, don't I think can't I hear you. you. Oh, she can't hear us. Okay, Tandra, you might have to... Um, Let me go back out and come back in. <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh, I had a question really quick. Go ahead, baby. I hope Tandra, uh, the mic issues clears up. Mm -hmm. Um, I've just noticed the pattern that ever since Wendy has come on to the show, there's always these like rumors surrounding her heritage that, um, are used to like malign her and her family. Now, I know originally when she first came on the show, a lot of those rumors were coming from Eddie's family. Um, I don't know if they are still actively doing those things like, like they were when she first came on to the show. But even as recent as that Kelly Clarkson appearance, when she was saying that she wanted to take everybody to her father's homeland and she was um, a lot of people were saying, well, she shouldn't be the one to host the trip to Nigeria. It should be NECA because NECA is really Nigerian. She goes to Nigeria all the time. Wendy never goes. I was like. How are you gonna tell somebody their national? Like, how are you gonna tell somebody their cultural heritage? Yeah, I've just noticed you know that that's funny? been happening a lot. But let me tell you though, it's funny you brought that up by Eddie's people. Now we don't know that Eddie's people was making up the rumors because those rumors originated from a blog site that used to be on YouTube that mm. used to make up stories. So we mm. don't know whether they heard anything from those people or whether they just said it because a lot of the stuff that came from over there was fabricated. Uh, you know, it's like Voldemort, they who shall not be named, but we all know. You know what? They shall so, not be named, but I do find it that, interesting that but, they reference but, that blog all the time when they are they, they still right. up they, ooh, you might yes. as well have you all might as well have media takeout on your show. I've just noticed that because there's the a thing. lot of blogs but that are but, reputable that they but, can but they don't mention them TV, because, but they always pick that one. Okay. Didn't Matt didn't I tell you they shall not be named? You thought I was joking. Get that comment out my chat. Retract it. I'm not playing with you. I'm not playing at all. I promise you, I'm not. Bianca, I need you to remove that comment and Matt don't move it. Get that out it, my it, God, it's, it's interesting to me that they, they choose that one but because, like is, I said, there's a lot of other say. reputable blogs that I know, speak on these stories and I'm they never use you. them. But listen to what I'm about to tell you. So the reason they're doing that is because the reputable blogs are not telling those stories. They want to use the dirty stuff, the xenophobic stuff. You you typed it before I said it, Mac. Okay, baby. But they want to use the nasty stuff that they know is not true. And that's the only place they can use to reference the nasty stuff that they know is not true. They got mm -hmm. to do that because nobody else was telling them stories. Now, what's crazy is the fact that with all that being said, they don't use them when it's time to talk about that these are the same people that said that um Giselle had the bump bump bump. Mm, they don't the bump, use bump, them bump. when it's time to say that Giselle was um over there at Hampton University forcing the pledges to commit lesbian acts on her. They don't use them for that. Or so that don't use them for the busy. rest of it. Mm -hmm. Don't use them for the rest of it. It, but it's intentional though and they've been doing that since she came on the show and they finally had what they thought was the you know you got the big joker and the little joker they thought they had both of them this season with NECA coming with this whole fabricated story with no proof they didn't think we were going to react to it the way we were they thought we were going to be like oh my god because I mean even down to like I know one story in particular and I'm saying y'all I don't even need proof 
to know this don't make sense. I had a whole back and forth with a, a friend at one point because this whole thing about Wendy being in um the different social circles in the DMV area and using some lady almost like a Sharice type, you know, like Sharice is the one that has all the connections, using some woman in the area for her connections um, for, for some charity or something she was working with. I was like, pause. One, the lady's a political commentator on television before she even got on Bravo. Two, she works for one of the most distinguished historical universities in this country. She probably has access to people, but just the alumni alone. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a huge research university and like they are historical. Georgetown is historical. I'm saying, why would she need to use this lady's connections? She has access to her own connections between the parents of all the students. That's a that's an expensive school and former students, alumni of that school, not to mention people who are always donating money to different that's campuses right. across the country. She got her own right. connections. The story why never made somebody else. It don't make sense, but they just throw things out there and think it's gonna stick and land. That. It's like um, Along those lines, right? Along those mm -hmm. lines, we see the extent of her reach because she's on every set. This girl is invited to everything by everybody. I'm talking about from, from the president, the vice president's mansion, the governor's mansion on down, all the charities. Like, she's literally everywhere. This girl yeah. is everywhere. Very booked. And sought after. Don't forget sought after. Mm -hmm. So why would she, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like those when so when something doesn't make sense, it's because it's not true. Yes. And that's not even something that's like hard to decipher or you need any like a uh, hard copy uh, of evidence of that. It really does not sound right because like, why would she need that? What connects can some regular civilian give her that she doesn't already have access to? Even the people who she attended school with, they've all probably gone on because that's how they build up their demographics and their stats for all these universities. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's probably, not only does she work for the school, but she's probably famous alumni for whatever institutions that she attended to acquire those four degrees. Shout out of to course. the educators. I'm and saying, the people she attended school with, those are connects get, right let me, there. Let me get sis comment. She said, Eddie mentioned they found it. Yes, they mentioned they don't mess with them, but what we talking about, you might not have been around back then, I don't know. There was a particular blog site slash channel that would say that they had talked to people and they had inside information that proved not to be inside information. So the fact that they didn't have a relationship, they had already talked about that. Everything that came after that, that came from that, that blog site slash channel, these inside informations, that's what we're saying is unconfirmed. We don't know. We know they had issues and we also know that um they have repaired a lot of that and they, you know, the children interact with their grandparents now and stuff like that. So it's on the mend. Um, but yeah, we did know about that, but I just wanted to address that. Go ahead too, too feisty. Go ahead, sis. I just, you know, I'm trying to get some of the comments in between y'all. No, I no, it's absolutely no problem. I was just saying that I've just noticed that there's been a pattern since Wendy has come on the show and they are usually coming at her in Culturally. regards to her cultural heritage. And I, I feel like this time they felt like they had the Trump card, but they we can went finally get it. We can finally they can't get come at her direct. This ain't even the first time they brought up the whole Osu thing on this show. But now we got a Nigerian woman that's from the same tribe as her family. So but we should be able to get it well. through now. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah, now we can get it through. We can get it over the goal line now. That's what they thought. Mm. yeah they were reckless with that and um the response was warranted and it was like i said it, it just bred a whole bunch of offensive things like because i'm not directly nigerian like um my mom's haitian and my father's african-american and i'm saying um that's beautiful there were conversations i, I that, love my haitian sisters shout out to y'all got them shapes <laughs> or y'all got them shapes <laughs> we like I'm, I'm, I'm witnessing bit, conversations I'm happening on Twitter and on YouTube, and I'm like, "Do y'all hear what y'all are saying? Y'all really they need wanted. to cut these conversations when you don't even know what you are talking about." But this is the thing: that is what the producers and Team Yellow and Andy wanted. They wanted to use the the negativity, the xenophobia that already exists within society to attack this lady. That's what they wanted. That the vilification of a Nigerian culture altogether. It yeah, it was disgusting. I just thought that was so horrible. I thought that was so horrible. 
Hi, she just subscribed. Y'all, we got somebody else new. Please say welcome, Nicole Robinson. Welcome to welcome Nicole to Robinson. Listen, I I love. Let me let me just tell y'all because I want to gush a little bit because I be fangirling over y'all. Okay, I love the fact that this is a place that we have ladies here on this porch on this channel from everywhere. We got sisters from different countries in West Africa, different tribes. We have sisters from the West Indies. Y'all beautiful Haitian girls. And yes, I be hating on y'all because y'all got them shapes. Y'all be shaped up, okay? And some of us just here, okay? I love that we have American sisters from all over the country because a Black American is not a monolith. Like, there's so many different regions, you know, food, dialects, languages, slangs, all that stuff. And I love that we have sisters from everywhere. We got all our sisters in the UK. Shout out to them from different places before they got to the UK, all of that. I love that we have that many different groups of black women on this platform and we're able to like find commonality. And I feel like RHOP missed the mark and they missed an opportunity to be that on Bravo. They missed that opportunity, like that could have been lit. That could have been so lit like they could have used that, brought in sisters from other cultures and like really had like a hell of a thing. Like it could have been the first thing of its kind on American TV. Like it really could have been something. And I think they missed the mark because they were too focused on trying to bring down one sister. Like that's just, it's pitiful, honestly. But I love, I love what we got going on over here because baby, it'd be, it be lit over here. Tandra, can you hear us this time? I can. Girl, tell us what you got I to say. Because we've been waiting. <laughs> now I want I want to know did did Wendy did Wendy mom didn't Wendy mama say she didn't know the girl? Yeah, she don't know that girl. So why would she do anything like that to the woman if she ain't got nothing against her? Ask me. If you ask me who gonna who who who, who will I ask? That's why it don't make no sense. <laughs> it didn't, no it didn't. It don't make no sense. Never met and Wendy sister. don't know her. Adam's house cat. But I'm I'm so and I'm I meet a I meet a lot of people and I might have seen their face before, but I don't know them people. <laughs> Joy fella, she said something. Yeah, I don't know. What up, girl? I love it. <laughs> yes, Belize and JB say Belize in the chat. Yes, we got beautiful sisters from South America. That's right. Y'all better catch it. They they bad. There's some bad girls over there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love my sisters. But the computer but wouldn't let me in because I was getting kind of irritated with the whole conversation. <laughs> I see you come up and go down. You know what? You know what? No, Tanzel, you blaming that computer. That might have been the Lord. But Jesus might have been stopping yeah. you from coming in at that time because y'all know we had a little agent of chaos. And I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. 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 That was Jesus. And you can that tell that that neck bone was uh, jealous in envy. <laughs> she was. So. She was, but the thing is, especially okay. when she was talking about talking about all her accomplishments, and they put the camera on, right on neck face. bone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because <laughs> I I don't know how to say the girl name. I got yeah. neck bones. So. Yeah, but I ain't going. That's her name. That's her At least name. she married yeah, the high school. Thanks. And, and listen, this is the yeah. thing. We can laugh and joke all day, but we all know you can meet people and you can come in contact with people that might be in a better position than you in life. They might have made more money. They might be like my sister. They, they roll up out of Ghana and um out of Ghana and out of um and out of Haiti. It's got these mean shapes. 
or whatever. Or you might run into a, a, one of the one of these bad Yoruba sisters that cook real good for them girls. And sometimes you might run into them girls from the UK and they got the slick accent. Or you might run into a southern girl with all this those silky southern drawl and bad southern say. You know what I'm saying? You might run into somebody that got something you don't have, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Let's be clear. When you meet a sister that's got something going for herself that you don't have going for you, that's your opportunity, one, to appreciate that your sister got it going on. And you got to be mad about it. I might look and say, oh, I'm hating on y'all. But y'all better than me, but I'm really not. I'm, I'm, I'm actually stoked like my sister bad. You know what I mean? And I think that's your opportunity not only to be excited and appreciate where your sister got it going on that you don't, but it's also an opportunity for you to bond with your sister, to tap into those lessons that she got, or maybe for her to like, put you on game. You know what I'm saying? She could have been like, girl, look, I can't, I can't get no get up in my get along, so girl, show me how to do what you do. Show me how to, I, I want to start some businesses. I don't know what to do. Now she up here selling sparkling wine that my sister on the phone called Malt Liquor. You know what I'm saying? She could have said, Wendy, girl, look, hook me up with who you know certain things. I think I want to do something like that. Help me out. Look, I want to do this. I'm trying to get some children, girl. You know what I'm saying? Put me on. Put me up. But instead of her doing that, you spent your time being envious, making up stories and being nasty. Don't do that. Like, I just don't understand it. I don't. If I see a sister that got something going that I ain't got going, help me out. Serious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll see. May I say something? Yes. Yeah, I wanted to say uh, when it came to Anika and the fact, you know, what furthers like bothers me the delusion is that she didn't realize during the reunion that Andy did not care at all about her, as nothing. Mm-hmm that pertain to a quote unquote storyline, she had to bring up that um, the fertility exercise she did with her husband, I can't remember the, the IUD. I can't I, remember. I, I, IUI. Yeah, I, IUI. Yeah, the IUI um, was not, did not take, she had to volunteer that information. Usually they have for the progress that one may have made on their they house. Didn't even ask, didn't right? one thing, didn't ask one thing that uh, again further confirmed that she was brought for an agenda that was solely to put Wendy in situation. That was the fact that there was nothing that was asked of her that could. It's that could present it to the viewer that endeared to the viewer was never asked. It was solely what happened between the two of them. And that's when you it was confirmation that it was. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And now that you pointed out, sis, you absolutely right. I told you y'all be saying stuff that I, I didn't even think of to say, but you're right. He didn't ask her. And y'all know, I don't know if you were here last live stream, we were talking about it. And I mentioned, uh, matter of fact, because tonight was your first night, so you weren't. But I had mentioned before, I would have liked to hear more about that. Talk to us about your decisions. Talk to us about why you waited this late to have a baby. Like, that's a real story. Like, that's the kind of stuff we want to know. I was busy. I was getting my education. I was falling. I was traveling. Girl, I was a party. Child, I was shocked. You know, mama hooked me up with this man. I don't even know him like that. Like, that's what we wanted. To, that's what I would have wanted to see. I would have wanted to see, like, what you really going through in that house. Is that man bothering you about children? Do you care? Is he, are y'all been going after this because you want a baby? Or is this because you got pressure coming from his mama? Or is pressure coming from your mama? Or what's going on in the baby situation? You know what I'm saying? There's oh, so much man. that could have been explored. She could have even explained how she was partying so much that she reached the age of 42, but was actually presented as 30 something on the show. Maybe right. the. You're right. <laughs> You're right. When she came in and said, 
Um, right, Kelly Dream, I caught it. Re, you had a little feedback, so I muted you, but you can still stay. Don't go nowhere. I just muted it because it was a little feedback. Oh, um, I just but, go ahead. Oh, but it was the fact that when she first came on, she said she was 35, and then later she was like, in all of my 40 years of living, something like that. <laughs> just, <laughs> that. No, but the fact that this, and this was a huge joke in a lot of the chats during the season, the fact that this was not one of the uh, viewers' question to uh, Aneka really surprises me because these are the type of things, especially when you're trying to inject a certain level of humor during a reunion, would have been brought up saying that, you know, uh, you, in you were introduced as a 30-something and when you were venting against Wendy, you said in your 40 something, because nobody says that. Nobody says that. Nobody overestimates their age. No. Nobody. Girl, especially you, you're right. I've been, thank you, because I've been saying I'm 25 for the last, <laughs> I don't even know how many years, girl. I've been telling that lie for a minute. So I know what you say. Ain't nobody adding no years on it. Exactly. And I was just, this was so unbelievably uncharacteristic un un of a woman that is presenting on TV that it would have made, made for good banter during the reunion. Not even that was asked. So that shows, again, that uh, product neither production or Andy had any vested interest in Enika mm -hmm. beyond mm -hmm. what she was meant to do to, to win. Do. Yeah. Now she was that supposed was to line and vilify Wendy. That was the extent. That was her sole purpose for being there. Mm -hmm. You're yeah. right. And you know, I mentioned earlier, you, you remember, sis, I had mentioned that how is it her segment, but it, everything is about Wendy. It was all Wendy driven. Actually, most of the reunion, and you did mention it, this part of the reunion, everything revolved against um. Wendy. Uh, Wendy with this attempt at quote unquote gotcha question, but she never fell for any of them. She was able nope. to answer them and very succinctly at that. Very succinctly very at that. Oh, oh, honey. Yes. I said, go, girl. Yeah. No. You guys aren't lying because they even try to get Kiara um, to even try to flip on her because they're like, well, Wendy's your friend. Why didn't she check on you? Wendy's your friend. Why didn't she want to share a room with you? Wendy, this, Wendy, like, you know, that, that. It, it I just don't understand it. But I, the, the one thing about this show is these women have great storylines, but they be on some BS. Giselle had great yep. storylines. Like she had, she could have talked about her recovering from um, being married to a man who be passing his penis around like it's peanut butter to everybody. Ooh. You know, she could have talked about, you know, her being a single mom, raising daughters, you know, making sure that they don't end up in the same situation as her, be, you know, and she could have talked about her fibroids. Even Robin could have talked about starting over, being a rich, being a rich woman who ended up being broke and starting over with her husband. Like they had so many great storylines, but they wanted to be like these delusional ditz bats. And I'm just like dingbats. I'm like, why? I mean, the show would have been more interesting and That's more relatable. Right. Like if we can go down the line with them and we could have got the real story. Like we really if Mia wanna tell us the truth about what the hell went on between her, Gordon, and this man, that would probably be interesting. If Ashley were to, you know, give us more in insight on Sheila and how she ended up under the bridge with the bad wigs and you know what's really going on in your house. If you and your husband really have an open marriage and he sleep with whoever and stay the hell out of his face, that would have been more interesting. Like you said, Giselle, with the whole fibroid thing last year, I said from the beginning, well, hell, Candace said your dwindling uterus was waiting for you to bring it out, and you didn't. I would have wanted to know, like, talk to me about what you're going through. Like, what is going on? Are you trying holistic stuff like Sheree did? Sheree was kind of boring a little bit with it, but at least she gave us the story. She could have I mean, told me, like, I'm not gonna go with the um with the holistic. I want to go straight to surgery. She could have told us what led her to even go there. Was it the weight gain, girl? Because we saw you gain on weight last year. Was that what did it? Were you having really bad periods? Were you hurting a lot? Like, how did your children respond to seeing you go through that? Like, none of this is what we got. We got none of it.
especially when you have three girls coming three of girls. age. We know our pervasive fibroids are in the black community, even though yes. it's not unique to us, but you know, they're going to be going through some things. You don't know if there may be some hereditary issues, anything. No, she has no desire. Why to was it in the conversation? Because yeah. I remember when my mother was going through stuff like that, <laughs> mama talked to us. Mm. Mama talked to us about stuff. And I remember thinking, wow, I hope that's never me. And a lot of stuff mama went through now i know about it all too well because now it's my turn mm. you know and i've had the moments like dang I, I thought it would never be me oh my god this woman passed me this you know what i'm saying so i think that there were so many missed opportunities and like i said when it came to nincompoop tell us your story how you end up with this man where you met this man at mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. with this man mm -hmm. you like this man did you hear about him paying them girls for coaching over there at the University of Maryland? Why, why the, why, why the, the uh, appliances and stuff ain't in the kitchen? Why we didn't get that story? Why did you? Why didn't you explain to us why all these boxes are still you, your wedding gifts ain't been unpacked? Who, what's going on with this childbirth stuff? Why didn't you try for a baby sooner? If you did, did why? How come it didn't work? How long y'all been trying to get a baby? Did you just start trying to get a baby? How did he act with you after the IUI didn't work? What made you take it that far? Like, what's going on? If How is your mother-in-law? Is she cool? Is she sweet to you? You know, how your mama feel about your man? We got nothing from this girl. Mm -mm. At this point, we barely knew, know what type of law she practices, what state she supposedly licensed in. We don't know you other than you like to tell stories about shrines called old women witches and wear greasy wigs we don't know anything else about this girl right and J and and um joy says i don't think she likes her husband i think yeah we all trying to figure out do do you like him don't you like him is he like this with his mouth open? like can you even cook like can you cook are you making the thing take out every day does he cook sometime around the house you know we don't know nothing. I think if she talked about her IUI process, we would understand why she acts the way that she does with her husband. Because let me tell you, when you're going through IUI and IUD, it's a very stressful process and very emotional. And, you know, sometimes you can latch out on your partner. And, like, she could have talked about this instead of looking like she's this horrible person who just hates her husband. So, I, I just, I don't get it. I just don't get it at all. All right, so we all I tried to give her a pass, and y'all know I did. I tried to give her on a, a pass on how she talked to her husband, because I noticed that he ain't always real nice to her either. But after what happened at the reunion backstage, no, their dynamic is problematic. Their dynamic is definitely problematic. I don't know if it seems so orchestrated for the show. There is something that is not genuine between the two of them. I don't know them. Don't want to pretend that I know them. But um, even yeah. there is no camaraderie behind them. They are very distant, very cold to one another. There's There doesn't seem to be a knowledge of of you know the other of person other, like what they need their love yeah. language you know what i mean like we see karen and uncle ray as long as they've been together they're still cute and flirty mm -hmm. we see um chris and and candace as much as it makes my back teeth itch there's mm -hmm. chemistry we see wendy and eddie and they act like little high school students always giggling and grinning and making eyes at they make me sick but they're cute yeah, and they're then cute. You even G and Mia, they both seem like scammers, but they scamming together. Together, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you got these two that are acting like they're like opponents or something. Like I don't even yeah. know what to call it. It's almost like an adversarial relationship. It's weird. Yep. That's why I said, like, when people are like, oh, she's so mean to him. I'm like, they both talk crazy to each other. Okay. We're not just gonna put this on the woman. Y'all know I'm not going there, but. It's both of them. But then after I saw what happened backstage at that reunion, the way she told him, you can go with you. You can go back with uh, Juan Dixon wherever he is. I say, wait a minute. God dang, sis. I can't even back you up on that, this one. That was extremely that was rough. But she doesn't Yes, that was. That, 
extremely harsh and unnecessary actually Listen, Empress, that was rough i was i was in shock i was like yo i can't even i was a, I was a tad disgusted by it because it was so unnecessary and it also showed how performative she is in a misunderstanding of oh but why are they saying that you are colorist because why didn't she say that in front of um what's her name robin yeah she made so basically she has an opinion of robin's relationship mm -hmm, but you ain't saying none of that to her not to her but you demonstrated your knowledge and your judgment of said exactly. relationship through your conversation through your dismissal of your husband and I that was that. very telling that was very telling it was and that shows her hypocrisy she's an hypocrite also, she's an hypocrite because mm -hmm. she's trying to be accepted by a group of people who, and she knows they are only tolerating her due to their disdain of uh, Wendy. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason she's being tolerated. So now let me drop this on y'all, right? Mm -hmm. Because y'all y'all actually took brought me to the promised land when y'all said that um she might be realizing she's on the wrong team. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna remove my pearls. I think it's safe. I don't think y'all <laughs> um grip them before tonight. So I'm gonna remove them. I think I'm safe to take off my pearls. Okay. But I feel like I feel like she's aware on on a very real level that these people are only tolerating her because she was willing to go after Wendy, right? I think that she's seen after the backlash online okay, that you definitely bet on a horse with a bum leg. And I think mm -hmm. that she sees that not only did she bet on a horse with a bum leg and pick a team that was very unpopular, and now you're the new girl on the unpopular team doing something that's very reprehensible. I think she's also unfortunately realizing that Wendy is equal to the task, that they can all team up against Wendy, and Wendy can hold her own against all them hookers, including her. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm -hmm. I think that may have something to do with her maybe rethinking her position. Like I jumped on the team where we got more numbers and this heifer is still slaying. All of you tramps lined up and she knocked them down like pins at a bowling alley. So you remember that uh, PhD that she was questioning at the beginning of the season? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. It was on full display. Hello, masterclass girl. She taught a masterclass yeah. tonight. I thought I was in class and y'all know I got a mouth on me. But hmm. baby, she taught a master class tonight. She did. And this she time she didn't need to, to say that she had four degrees. She spoke those four degrees. Baby, she, thank you. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she she did. walked in there, put up drywall, and hung her degrees in that studio is what she did. She hung them <laughs> because there was no way around it. And that's when it made no impact because she didn't have to reiterate that, yes, she's that educated. She demonstrated exactly how she was. And you're right. Girl, she, I, she, I was shocked that Giselle even apologized. That shocked me. I was like, I thought my she retracted. She did not apologize. She, oh, well, she, yeah. apologize. she said, Well, then I'll take Wendy out of it. I'll take Wendy yeah. out of it. Yeah. But she never right. said, Wendy, I'm sorry. And you know what's worse? It's her saying, Well, after watching the footage. So that means you literally watch the truth and you chose to tell a lie. And that's she what she's she not like her about money. Right. She chose the lie anyway. How do you? And, that's like okay. You tell me, Nitra. Google, um, honey crisp, honey crisp apples, and I've googled it. You see me Google it. You see me watch the picture of the honey crisp apples, and I come back in here and tell you those apples are blue. That's not how how I feel. That's not a misunderstanding. That's me visually confirming something and choosing to tell a lie. That is malicious. Exactly. And I said that in the chat earlier. And we, as really important to, to use the words appropriately because now some people are going to ask, 
oh, I'm going to claim that she apologized. She never did. She retracted. And she never apologized. And she didn't say, well, well, when I'm sorry for having, uh, for 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 putting your name in this particular situation. Clearly, you had nothing to do about it. She even interjected and said she felt. And well, again, that's how I feel. That's how, that's how I, feel. I feel. And this is the thing about this woman and why she's extremely dangerous because the narrative that she drew last season when it came to Chris, a lot of people gave her, there was the benefit of the doubt people because one of the things that is happening in this very troubling society is that if it isn't on camera, something apparently as it did not happen. So she utilized that and said, well, even though it was not on camera, it happened, it happened, it happened. So she got a lot of people to rally around her on the notion that even though it may not have happened the way she described it, the fact that she felt a That's what I said. Now, sis, exactly. I know you just getting here, but y'all, when was that? Was that like a week ago, week and a half ago? I did a whole video and I went through all of the audio so y'all can hear the story that she told on Chris from start to finish. And I went through the evolution of that lie. How that like grew and changed and morphed like a power ranger it evolved like darwinism first off she changed that lie so bad that by the time we got to this year which is what made me do that video okay was people saying well all she said was that she felt uncomfortable and i had to go back to pull the whole lie from the beginning from its genesis and it wasn't that he she said he made her uncomfortable she said he is a sneaky link. I've, I've been around many a married men who wanted to see if I was with it. I felt like he wanted to see if I was with it. He was complaining about his wife. He was doing that because he wanted me to say, I could, you know, saying, Sean telling me he was unhappy because he wanted me to say that I can make you happy. And that's what she did. Okay. And once that was knocked down and she knew how ridiculous it sounded and nobody was buying it, it evolved into all I said. He made me uncomfortable because I didn't want to be in a room with somebody's husband. Well, she's and a then when husband. she got mad because that wasn't sticking, then she came back this year and said, he made me go in a hotel room and, and shut the door. She lied and the lie kept changing. But because like you, more to your point, because she was able to get away with that lie by saying, it's how I feel. She tried mm -hmm. to use that again to get this lie over the goal line with Wendy. And it took Mia, who lies like a fish swims, to say, well, that's not true. Yep. <laughs> they said that tonight. Lie. <laughs> lie, yep. Mia. PD, PD, I, P, is that PD, I-Z-L? Thank you for the super chat. She says, my first time to the channel. This is very insightful. Thank you. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Y'all, please welcome. Uh, is is Y'all help me up here. Does that say P-D-I-Z-L? Y'all know my I'm reading it. I'm reading it. Yeah, P-Dizzle. That's the way I'm reading it. P-Dizzle for Sizzle. Okay, well, y'all welcome P-Dizzle to, to the channel. Welcome, baby. I'm sorry. My eyes are bad. I know I say that I'm 25, but Auntie is not 25, okay? Auntie's old, and so are her eyes. So, P. Dizzle, welcome to the channel. Y'all welcome. Seriously, spam the chat with welcome. Okay? Welcome, 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 and thank you for the super chat. But yeah, I, you know, you, you, know, make, you, you make say? me want to subscribe to Peacock so I could go and see the full read down that Monique gave to her. Because I heard that she read her so good that she was shook to the bones. So I, I want to see was. the They said she had a meltdown and was cursing and dropping f bomb. I want to see it, girl. I want to see it. Wow. Okay. Oh, we got it right, y'all. Thanks, guys. She said, yes, it's pronounced P. Dizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> That's so cute. I love when people are, are so cool like that. I ain't never been that cool. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Okay. I love it. I love it. Star says, I wish Candace asked Glizzy why would Chris be into her? She should have asked her because I would have asked her. Explain so, to me why he would want to push your swollen legs apart. 
to fall well, into the bat cave. Why? Well, it's because the a lot of people in the black community have been gassing up this woman head forever even from chat to chat you know you hear people well she's a disgusting human being but she but you know she's a she's a she's a beautiful uh oh, she's so I, beautiful it's like I, girl I, you I, look I, like an old woman who used to be cute that's I, what I it. I yes I don't see it at all. I don't even see the use to be cute. I see nothing in this woman because, first of all, she chews like a farm animal. She looks like a cow every time she eats on screen. She she has no manners, completely uncouth. She barely knows how to sit properly. I I don't know. I, and, I'm just... and sis, don't, and don't forget, she talks like a runaway slave. Don't forget that. Mm. He he looked like he in high school. I'm still mad about her renovating the house. Like, <laughs> what is that? What? That poor house. <laughs> I think she's gonna, the kids are going to uh, complete the renovation at this point. <laughs> Listen, it's bad. But yeah, I'm with you. I'm, I'm sorry, though. Candace should have asked the like, Giselle, have you seen yourself? Hey, I mean, literally, this girl, like Giselle, darling, precious darling, precious, precious darling, have you seen yourself? Why would this man leave a younger woman who is attractive and thin and svelte, who has more money than him, who by rights, he should know her name, and she's his whole meal ticket. She, He's going to leave all of that to come and push your swollen legs apart. Why would he do that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it doesn't make sense like can we just be real we're women okay women are like flowers we have a season my dear and we begin to wilt it's just the truth okay can we be honest do y'all mind if we honest for a little while not one of us looked the way we looked when we were young women of course we were... not and we have to admit it and we have to also we accept to it and leave it, it. That and we have to tell ourselves the truth there's no man with a younger young looking fresh wife unspoiled wife her body has not even been disfigured by childbirth okay because childbirth does a number on us and we know it our breasts after a while are no longer breasting our backsides they lose some you know after a while they don't defy gravity like they used to they start giving in okay our, our tummies are no longer tight because they've carried people he whole humans who eat meat and wear shoes and in her case, her neck has slipped and fallen and it cannot get back up. Why would some man with a younger, fresh girl start looking at you? You! Your legs are tight, your neck is loose, you're old like the rest of us. Why on earth would that man be looking? That's like me or any of us saying that some man who has a younger woman is, you're gonna leave that young, fresh girl for me who used to be fine back in 89 like come on cut the crap stop it i don't care who told you you were pretty i don't care who told you that yellow gives you that much value there's not enough yellow in the world to make a man stop looking at a young woman whose body is still intact to come over here where the breasts are not breasting where you're you're as wide as a refrigerator your legs my dear you are walking on water every day of your life like saint peter and this is what he's going to leave his young fresh wife with money for it was nonsense the minute she said it it was nonsense the only time a man is looking at an older woman who looks like his auntie is because he's hungry and you're somewhere for him to live that's the only time he already got somewhere to live with a younger woman why would he do that it doesn't make sense does it am i tripping um, no, nope, the man is younger than her with a young with an even younger wife but he's he'll look at you let me tell you something i don't i don't believe that i'm a, a, a troll but i know my age okay and childbirth mm -hmm. has indeed disfigured my body i ain't been fine like that for a long time it's a good thing me and papa are old together okay this methylated love over here as y'all know but if some young man with an even younger wife said anything to me i'm only going to assume that you want to play the food or you want you want to borrow my phone to call your young pretty wife i'm never going to think 
in my brain that this young man with a younger wife is coming over here to help me rub Icy Hot on. It ain't happening. Why? Giselle is delusional and sick. And she had to be delusional to even tell a lie like that. It does, No sane person would tell a lie like that. Uh, yeah, it, it really takes a, a high level of delusion to speak like that, especially on the public forum. Sister Queen, hey! She said she gonna come for the for necrosis his husband next. She gonna learn. Yes, girl. Miss mm. you. You ain't called me in a long time. But go ahead, Haitian Empress. That was my sister. I had to speak to her. Oh, no. But, but of course. <laughs> we have to welcome all your guests. No, but it's um, it, it's even, even if she taught it, the fact that she has the audacity to speak about it so publicly speaks also to, to how her ego has been. You know what I think, though? Yes. Sis, I don't believe... I don't believe she ever thought that. I think it's fair to say, I don't believe Giselle ever thought that. What I think she thought was, I think she overestimated, I think she overestimated her desirability and said that I can yeah. tell that lie and everyone will believe it because well, why wouldn't he want me? Uh, my skin is lighter than hers. But she forgot. You're ancient. Like the rest of us. We're on mothballs. Any woman, and that goes for all of us, honey, me included, <sighs> Any of us who was who was at our prime in the early 90s or the late 80s, ain't no man leaving no young woman for none of us. Can we just be honest? It ain't happening, but she overestimated. She thought that there was enough yellow power that because her skin was lighter, <laughs> this man was not going to see any of that age. And swimming. He was going to overlook that onion leg neck. Because you know, her neck is like a series of packed together. But I, I, I'm sorry, but her kids kind of snitched on her regarding that relationship because they knew it wasn't serious. So they're just like, we're going to go ahead and, you know, just play it up. Because when kids see their parent, well, I know from my sister's kids, when she was dating somebody that my sister was in a relationship with, their kids used to get so mad but if it was just somebody she was like messing around with they didn't care because they knew it wasn't serious and and do you think that he would have introduced her daughter so quickly to the man if he was serious he was or real, no, she introduced i don't believe yeah. I, i'm with you I don't believe she right. introduced a, a co-worker the same way for instance all of us who are in the corporate world if we have family we we kind of very casually can introduce a colleague I feel that when people say, but she introduced the man to her to her daughters, they say she introduced a coworker. I think that's the only reason Bravo as well. Right. You know? That you're right. That was the only reason because it was a coworker. There was one thing I do believe in, in my heart of hearts, and I know y'all might get me, but I believe she's a good mama. I believe she protects her girls. And yeah. I don't believe for one minute that she would have allowed some random fly by night man especially a younger man that's close to their age that could possibly be predatory anywhere near her girls i don't yeah. believe it okay so that i don't believe it. because you know earlier i said i i questioned the motherhood and i want to be clear i i do believe like she does everything for her daughters but i don't think mm -hmm. that she estimates the 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 how the nastiness that she's putting forth on TV can also impact her daughters. And that's where I you know, you that. put certain things into question because her character is indeed questionable and her character remains an example for her daughters, nonetheless. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I, I absolutely believe that she's short-sighted and she's not thinking about how her behavior toward other people can affect can impact her girls but i believe she yeah. loves her girls you know like she, no, loves, I believe she loves her daughters I she do. seems to love adore her daughters and, that's and she the, yes and i and actually i like that version of her and i've said that before i say the same thing about um kenya moore i don't like kenya moore either she another line helper but i love to watch her as a mama because she's a good mama she's a good mama to that little baby so a lot of these ladies, when they're acting and putting on for the camera, and we see some of their ugly sides. I almost wish that they would mm -hmm. cut some of that 
and show them more in their role as mothers. I would love to see that more of that because when she with her children, you know, she's bearable. Like uh, all except for the time she put that foot rag in her face. I still don't know why she did that. When they were at the nail shop, you remember that? Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. I don't know why she did that. But usually, usually, like she's much more bearable and likable when she's being a mother. Queen say, I know some men are classy, a.k.a. anything under the skirt, but Gizzard is not that girl at all to fiaqua <laughs> to fia this girl with me and you we must talk okay i know you're on the west coast when i get off of here because it ain't gonna be long we gotta talk me and you okay miss dogan said i would bet all the money i got that g had that boy around young girls she's silly yeah i believe she had him around because we don't believe that she's um we don't believe she's dating him i think it's just a co-worker yeah, I, I kind of felt I, I thought you meant classless, sis. Mm -mm. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I don't believe it. And, and it's again, she, she brings nothing but nastiness to the show. All she tries to do is exile people instead of saying, how can I bridge the gap? I'm one of the oldest person. I should have, I should try to display some modicum of wisdom in my interaction with other women. There were plenty of opportunities for her to be civil. She doesn't, and, and again, to go back to Andy's bias, to when they were talking about faces, but what about her making faces at the Happy Eddie event? How about her walking yeah. into the event without greeting the people who are hosting it? This, this is, and, and they didn't then even mention any of it. Me, you know? And people want to remind me that this show was supposed to be about etiquette? Yeah, no. Kim you don't Kat, even have basic really? social skills. You don't even right. have basic social skills okay. that allow you to navigate in society as a functioning human being. You it's harm true. everything. You, you, you have... You, you have fights with everybody, but not physical fight because you not a verbal fight because you don't possess. She just does nasty things and makes accusations. Exactly. Kim exactly. Kat, thank you so much for the super chat, sis. She said, please go back and watch season five. Rob is smiling while fights occurred. Yes. She was smiling when Mia attacked Dr. Wendy. Remember, she she pulled out her phone to record and said fight. Um, she says, evil and quite conveniently. Ashley went to the restroom before the fight happened and Karen said it at the reunion. Thank you for the super chat and you are absolutely correct. But um, what I was going to ask and re I just, please keep talking. Just unmute when you finna say something. I only, I, I promise I only muted for um feedback. I want you to talk to me. Um, not you Haitian Empress. You don't have no feedback, but re got a little feedback. I don't know why I think it may be like the headphone or something, but what I was about to say was, if you went on Twitter, right, where people were submitting the questions to Andy, just go look at the questions people were submitting. Andy overlooked every question that would have held Giselle's feet to the fire. He overlooked every one of them. And, but he had to look far and wide and deep to find questions about Wendy and found two that were almost identical. Wow. Like he was trying to help them. Well, this is not help anymore right in a very clear narrative as to who he wants and who he doesn't want on this show he is willing to support people who are in favor of violence in favor of icing out people in favor of not bringing any kind of unity or cohesive to get like cohesiveness in a show is he prefers those people over the others that bring some value to the show. That's a choice. Mm -hmm. Queen, I think she's leaving for the reason she said for her children. She's missing out on stuff and you can't get that stuff back. Them children, at the end of the day, them kids do not care how many jobs you got. They want their mama at their little league game. And mm -hmm. I've been there and done that and I've done my best to be at everything. I mean, practices and games. Mom, this mama be, is on the scene. So I understand why she would do it. Paige, thank you so much for the super chat, sis. I appreciate the support. 
but listen, ladies, we done been here for three hours, 58 Ooh. minutes, and 25 seconds. I need final thoughts. Haitian Empress, you came up first, so you give it to me first. Okay. Uh, first of all, it was really a pleasure uh, making your acquaintance. <laughs> it's right. It was, uh, it was just that. a wonderful, healthy exchange. Uh, I think we went deep. I think we explore some subjects that are very difficult to navigate, but at the same time, we did apply the care that is required for those type of conversation. I think that the discussion here were very unbiased with a lot of honesty. However, we do realize that there are some people we can no longer support. And I think that we have to come to this decision as to what we have to do with this show. And it's up to us as a viewers to send a message because if, as you say, people send question on Twitter, but they pick and choose what they want. So mm -hmm. obviously they want to disregard the, the, the voice of the viewer. So now the viewer has to show them with the numbers. Yep. Very true. Farewell to a season that was mightily worthless, a waste of my time. Every Sunday, I thought it was going to get better, and it gave absolutely nothing. It was a sheer disregard for the, my time, the quality. I lost brain cells. That's what I am oh. in Bravo. I lost brain cells. <laughs> you know, I understand. We have a lot of ladies over here on this channel that do not watch the show. They only come to the reviews yeah. because they just can't take it. It's too triggering. It's very triggering sometimes, and 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 it's the the worst is that it's not even entertaining. It's triggering, not, not even entertaining. So I'm I'm just kind of like to me, I am glad I will support a lot of channels because I understand that it's the way many people do their living. However, when it comes to the show, it doesn't need my support anymore. Yeah, I'm with you. I understand that a lot of people are saying that they want to boycott. So, you know, I will be here to tell y'all what happens if anything happens. But I totally understand it. And I don't agree with our sisters engaging in anything that is self, you know, that could be classified as self-harm. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm in full support. I will do my best to give responsible social commentary about mm -hmm. what is happening and how black women are being portrayed, treated, and even have our characters assassinated. We're going to address it. We're going to tell a joke or two, but we're going to always get to the bottom of it. So yeah. I'm the just glad to have you. I like you, girl. You fun. I like you. You, you, I like you too. I will continue to come on your channel. I don't watch a lot of reality TV, so mm -hmm. it's a little bit difficult, but at the same time, if they are definitely engaged in conversation, I will be there. You are... I love your perspective. It was really very entertaining tonight. Thank you so much. You made my Thank evening. <laughs> I appreciate you. Re, final thoughts, girl. Final thoughts. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in the show overall because the whole concept of the show is supposed to be like these parents that are active in Jack and Jill. They're supposed to be showing us this upscale echelon lifestyle. And what we get mm -hmm. is a dumpster fire. And, you know, it's like they rather feed into the negativity of black women instead of like push like pushing black women up to make black women to show black women being, you know, showing successful black women that are moving in directions that make other black women look, you know, in better light. And I'm, I'm just so disappointed. And I can't stand Eric Fuller because every time you say anything about Eric Fuller and what he does for either RHOA or RHOP, he doesn't do anything. Like, so what is the point of having him being the producer? And we need to just get rid of Andy, period, point blank, period. He shouldn't even be hosting anymore because he, like, the, you're supposed to be a neutral host. You shouldn't be, like, you shouldn't have favoritism. And it, it just kills the whole reunion. And it just makes the whole network look bad. It does. That's what it looks and like Giselle, it, she looks like what she looks like those turtles every time she's lying because <laughs> <laughs> you know when the turtles they, they stick their neck back in the um their head back in the shell. 
<laughs> that's what she reminds me of every time she's like lying and i'm like is she constipated what's going on with her but i'm sorry to say that and what the heck is up with robin's face why does it look like a, her face is a twisted gremlin every time there's some like drama with like wendy and candace like Candace has been violated on this show twice and you're grinning about it, but you like, she needs to keep that same energy to Juan point blank period. All right. Mm -hmm. And I, I swear to God that Juan was telling us about her and like codes because he was like, this is why I don't deal with her shenanigans. Y'all's going to learn. And we learn why Juan we doesn't mess did. with her. We sure did. Juan, listen, I could laugh at Juan up until he told that girl she made his skin wrong that pissed me off i'm gonna be honest i ain't like it i ain't like that that did something to me about when he said right. she stank in this girl's house well him saying she was stank i wasn't mad at that she was assaulting his nose he had the right to say something about it now i'm never gonna tell you that somebody can you know come you out and you can't say nothing but him telling her that you make my skin wrong while you're in this girl's house eating her food, using her toilet, you know, you're already not nice to her. You always yelling, cursing her out. You try to rip her arm off in a car, though. Like, you're, you, you, we got your point. You're not nice to her. You don't really like her. But it was the whole, you make my skin fall. It was like, you know, this girl is on camera. You've already displayed your disdain for her. Some, of us can overlook it because she did mess up your money but this that you make my skin crawl it was like you went out of your way to try to like finish her to humiliate her and apparently it worked because the rest of the season she did not call him on camera when she went on the next trip she called her mama she was forced to call miss gladys because she knew if she called him i i felt like he was going to get worse so like in reality i was okay with him until he did that i didn't like that and I have one last thing to say. For eight seasons, why is it that Ashley never looks decent and she always looks like she's a streetwalker in all her outfits? Nothing at all. And why is why does Giselle look like an extra from a JC Penny catalog? Can somebody explain that to me? Like all her clothes is coming out of JC Penny's. And I ain't talking about the regular price. I'm talking about when they're having their sales. And that's all I have to say. Well, amen. Well, Rita said the benediction. Tanjra, what, what's your final thoughts, please? I just think what are your Giselle final thoughts? Is, I feel like Giselle is an imp for uh, Bravo. She's a villain. They put her in to do stuff for them. That's why um, Andy had gave her an out with that with the dude that she was supposed to be. In. You know, we saw the, we saw him with another girl on the what can call it. So he kind of smoothed it out, so nobody wouldn't say nothing. You know, somebody would say, "You don't change," because you know they feel like all her relationships she had on on uh, on the screen was fake. So, and they use her to to do that. She she's a puppet for Bravo. She and they making her I they making her look stupid. They making her look stupid. Yes, child, real stupid. She, I agree. I agree. She well, ladies, but she she's still a black woman. They don't care much care. Uh, yeah, all that. Hey, Renee, sit. Hey, Mark and Kay. Say Giselle don't have taste when it comes to picking out a tie. She sure don't, baby. She sure don't. Yes, yes, honey. Re gave us the benediction. Yes, and Bianca say ain't nobody studying stiff draws rubbing. I holler because I'm like this not stiff draws rubbing. Oh Lord. Listen, ladies, I appreciate y'all. Y'all have taken me on a journey tonight. Y'all have helped me to see things that I did not see. You all made me grab my pearls and put them on so that I can clutch them. I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I have enjoyed y'all taking me on the gambit of laughter, seriousness, um, all of it. I enjoyed all of it. And um, please come again. 
please come again. We're getting ready to close out. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the ladies on down. Y'all tell these lovely ladies good evening and please thank them for coming to hang with us tonight. I appreciate all of you all. Thank you so much. Listen, folks, we about to get up out of here. It's been four hours, eight minutes and 33 seconds. Yes, it has. And I appreciate all of you. This was fun. I got comfortable and got into the conversation. Y'all were fun in the chat. The ladies that called in were fun. Um, thank you for all of the support. Everybody who sent a cash app, not a cash app, but a super chat or a super sticker. I appreciate you guys. Every All the new members, we appreciate you. Everybody who it was your first time live, I appreciate, appreciate you. Um, hopefully we were able to tell everybody welcome who was new. And if we didn't get to do it personally, individually, let me say it now. Welcome to you. Please don't let it be your last time. So y'all know what time it is, right? Right. So listen, if you did not hit the like button on the way in, please make sure that you hit the like button on the way out. All right. Please hit your notification bell and click all so you'll know every time we go live on this good channel. Make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed because we are happy to have you here. Okay. Everybody is welcome. So please subscribe. If you want to join channel membership and put your crown on, hit the join button beneath the video or the membership link in the description box. Now, also in the description box is the link for our Royal Family merchandise. So you can get your crown here, your classic black and gold or our new emerald crown design. And we have the link for our Amazon storefront so we can all shop together for our homes. And the link for my Amazon wish list in case you want to send a girl some snacks, some doodads, notepads, pens, so I can take more notes so we can come in here and talk some more. Okay? So listen, y'all enjoy the rest of your night. I appreciate you. Sweet dreams. Say your prayers. Okay? If you're driving, get home safe. And remember, in case no one else says it to you, God loves you, I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it, okay? So we'll talk again soon. Bye, y'all.